All right, we should be we should be streaming. Doug, if you want to go ahead and claim the host role, then go ahead and do so. All right, thank you. Should you. Be good to go. Thanks, Patrick. Yep. Uh, Absolutely. Commissioner, Commissioner Parenter, whenever you want to get started, I think we're ready. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, we are here. It is Tuesday, April 6th, 2021. It is 4.03 p.m. Uh, for our virtual German Village Commission meeting. Uh, meeting is hereby called to order. Next Commission monthly business meeting will be at 12 noon Tuesday, April 20th, 2021, a virtual hearing via WebEx, similar to the one we're at at the moment. Next Commission hearing will be 4 p.m. Tuesday, May 4th, 2021, again via WebEx, as we are now. A uh, swearing in of staff, please. Staff, say hello and raise your right hand. Okay, hello, and um, I do you know, attest to telling the truth tonight. The truth, truth nothing, but... <laughs> I do, Jacqueline Lehman, uh, Assistant Historic Preservation Officer. Excellent, thank you. Uh, introduction of Commissioner Present, if you would please uh, indicate by saying present when I call your name. Commissioner Thiel. Present. Commissioner Durst. Present. Commissioner Ferriel. Present. Commissioner McCoy. Present. Commissioner Foley. Present. Muted. Uh, Anthony Hartke is our chair. He is not present at the moment. He should be joining us in about 90 minutes. My name is Jay Panzer. I'm the vice chair and we'll be chairing this meeting. Um, is there a motion for approval of the minutes of the Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021? Meeting. I so move. Second. Any questions? Those in favor? Aye. 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 I guess I Aye. should. Pack. Sorry. <laughs> without objection. Let's let's do it that way, Commissioner Ferriel, as you are want to say. Without objection. Um, are there any issues for public forum? Uh, no public forum. Hearing none, we'll move on to approval or, or ratification of staff approvals, which begin on page. Wow, on page five. Yeah. I like it. Short. I have to recuse myself from 648 Mohawk Street. Okay. I've got to recuse myself from 224 Lear, I think. Sure. Anyone else? Would someone care to make a motion? I move to ratify the uh, staff approvals. Second. Um, those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye. The staff recommendation or the um, Staff approvals are ratified. Moving on to applications for certificate of appropriateness. Uh, staff reports are, were appended to the um, hearing notification and are available by clicking on the link here. Uh, agenda item number one, GV 2104-020526 South 3rd Street. Do we have applicants for this? Application. Agenda item number one, 526 South 3rd Street. I don't okay, see Okay, hearing none, we're gonna stick a pin in it. We'll come back okay. around to this. Agenda item number two, GV 21-03-01139 Schiller Alley. Steve I'm Armstrong, here. Colin Ferguson. Steve Armstrong is here. I'm here. Colin Ferguson is here. All right. Um, I need to see you on video somehow. I'm on video. I'll okay. Let's Steve. Just keep talking and you're, you're, hopefully you'll pop up here. I'm on, Colin Ferguson's on video. I'll let Steve go ahead and hop on. I believe I'm on video, but I'm doing this via phone because I'm not in the office. Can you not see me? I see Colin. I don't see Steve. 
Oh, there we go. Uh, there we go. Will you raise your right hands, please? Do you swear to tell? Do you swear to tell the truth, all the truth, and nothing but? I do. I do. Um, and again, state your names, please. Steve Armstrong. Colin Ferguson. <laughs> Jacqueline, tell us why we're here this evening. Okay, so 39 Schiller uh, Alley is a continued application, and the proposed work involves replacing original two over two windows with renewal by Anderson wood composite window, and that would be keeping the two over two configuration, and the exterior color for those windows would be black. So the original two over two double hung wood windows um, appear to be in repairable condition based on the submitted photos and uh, videos. Um, and the at the February 16th business meeting, the commission noted that the photos showed ship paint but did not appear to show structural damage and that repair would be more appropriate and noted the proposed anderson windows are not on the approved windows list and requested a material sample to consider windows as a test case and the applicant has submitted a window sample for the proposed anderson composite window a staff does recommend repair of the original historic windows and those are based on the standards for alteration specifically number two five and six Uh, would the applicant like to add anything? Well, we provided additional video uh, to staff uh, showing the condition of all windows. Uh, they were all labeled. Uh, we don't believe that these are repairable. Uh, the, at, at best, they could uh, improve the appearance, uh, but uh, all the sashes are very loose. Uh, even a liner would not uh, uh, improve their performance. And uh, that's what the owner believes also, Mr. Ferguson, I believe he can speak for himself. That is correct. Um, yeah, if you could please pull up the videos that were provided, there are windows that are actually um, no longer even able to sit within the sash because they have shrunk so much they can, they're, they're falling out, so. Which, the video should I? play here they were submitted a, about a month ago if you could do it by date yes we have all Jacqueline, the videos here have... but i'm just we're just not sure which one you would like to be played uh, i can't see them <laughs> Do you have them by date? They would yes, have been the are. last one. They would have been the last one submitted. There's a large group of them all submitted on March 22nd. Yes, that yes, would have been it. And do you know which one of those videos you would like to be played or which well, is I, the best to start with? I, I, I could probably just start with any of them. I don't believe, okay. I believe I think they're all, different clips. All the commissioners have uh seeing the videos they are part of the application materials so that has okay, been included um if you go if you go down just for the moment if you go down yes yeah, 709 7009 i think is going to be a gif file can see in the video that they, they're no longer uh, even in the pocket. Uh, the interior stop uh, is no longer stopping the sash. And that's not pulling it over to one side either. 
uh, that's just sitting in the center of the opening. Um, commissioners, any issues? Any yeah, questions? yeah. I walked down on Sunday to take a look at these windows, and in my opinion, these windows suffer from a lack of maintenance. I don't think anything's been done on them in probably ten years. They have a significant loss of putty. You can see the raw edges of the glass. So I'm not at this point willing to approve these windows all be ripped out without having the opportunity of having them uh, refurbished or restored. They're they're in bad shape, but it's not it's not for wear. It's lack of maintenance. If if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, in the past when we've had windows in this kind of condition. Um, and someone claims they can't be repaired, it's been after several attempts at professional repair that have been unsuccessful. I don't think these have even been evaluated by someone who's a professional uh, window repair person. They've been evaluated by someone who earns a living tearing windows out and replacing them with their own windows. Um, but, but given staff's recommendation on Commissioner Teal's um, inspection of the windows it doesn't seem to me like we can uh, justify pulling them out uh, given the given the guidelines commissioner field any other commissioners I... have anything to say anything else from the applicant i have actually had them uh, a quote for someone to come out and professionally repair them um, I believe that was submitted with the very initial application. Uh, this is the fourth time coming through to the commission. Um, so I would encourage you to go ahead and go back and take a look at that. So you had a quote from someone who believed they could be repaired. No, they were saying that uh, while they can repair the actual weights of them, they cannot uh, repair the the shrinking of the sashes so that it is in a safe and operable condition. Where I, I mean, we're looking at the mm -hmm. estimate now, which is just a one pager with a with a cost on it without a, a detailed scope of work. Is there is there a detailed scope of work that goes along? I mean, if you can go back a page and forward a page. Uh, I can. I believe that was submitted. If it's not there, then I'm not sure. I I don't believe I've seen it, and I'm I'm not seeing it here hey, thus Marcus, far. Could you scroll down all the way to the bottom? I just want to make sure there wasn't anything added to the end of this uh, the application materials. Sorry, I'm I'm scrolling through it as well, and I'm not. I believe the estimate was for uh, appearance work. Uh, that, that's not what it. I, I mean, I, and I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm simply saying that's not. That doesn't seem to be what it says. And I'm not saying that that's not correct. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that that. What we're seeing here is something that simply says repair customers existing windows. That's the, the 1st page on the. Uh, of the, uh, the 1st page of the package that we've got from window works. And, and am I right? It seems like a pretty low. Price. Or pretty high price for cosmetic work. But what do I know about prices of that? Yeah, I'm not going to characterize that, but, but I, um. It's both sides. That's part of it. So he's scraping both the inside and the outside of the window, I believe. But he really can't repair them there. There's nothing to repair, uh, except for the weight cords, uh, and then just to go ahead and scrape them. Uh, you know, he can't expand the sashes or. 
I'll even line the jam. Uh, I mean, actually, actually, you're, you're listing, excuse me, Mr. Armstrong, you're listing all things that can, in fact, be done. I don't know whether any of those are included in, in the quote, because the quote is not detailed in that way. But what you just described are all things that can, in fact, be done technically. Can't stretch the jam. I mean, you can't yeah, stretch actually, the sash. You, what you do is you, you put fillers on the, on the edges of the sash, and you, you match them in. So that that is, I, I mean, it's it's something that's done, but we don't we can't tell from what we have. Uh, there's there's doesn't seem at this point to be any evidence that 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 describes what it is that is being proposed here on this estimate for ten thousand eight hundred dollars. So and the cost would be as a hardship case after it was denied. So not not this jurisdiction, but as an applicant for the Yankee Trader Building several years ago, we had to re we had to do an extensive repair to the existing wood windows because that's in the Historic Resource Commission's uh, um, jurisdiction, and we had to take every sash out, evaluate what parts could be kept, what parts couldn't, replace pieces and parts, and put them all back together in a way that kept as much original as possible. The conversation we had there, there is a point at which there's nothing original going back where it makes it an interesting conversation of whether or not that's what to do. I, I'd be interested in Carissa's opinion on that regard and kind of um, with her extensive experience in that, in that market. Teresa? You're on mute. There you go. Yeah, it's kind of hard to say without actually going out there. Usually we like stick things in them to see if the wood's still solid. And if, I mean, usually that's the main case for not being able to repair a window is that the wood is just rotted. I think we always said it's like 50% of it is rotted and just would have to be totally replaced. So without going out there and sticking things in the wood, but just from the uh, images, they look like they're in good shape. They've just over time, Absorbed moisture, swelled and shrunk, swelled and shrunk, and now they just don't fit the opening anymore. So, Teresa, in that in that case, would you keep the existing uh, frames, sash pockets, and and rebuild new new sashes as required? Perhaps use existing glass. I mean, is that the type of thing you would do? Yeah, I'm tr yeah, I'm not the person in my office who does that, but that's we have uh, like at the Woodward Opera House, all those windows were just taken out and refinished and just put right back in and those were much larger windows right but my memory was that the wood was all very solid even if none of the uh, sashes was quite square and didn't quite fit in the uh, openings securely anymore uh, that, that that is a business it's not a home that you're living in so uh not a total fair comparison we actually leave the sash uh, I'm sorry, the frame in the opening. So our window fits inside the pocket. So we're leaving a decent amount of the window uh, there. But you're removing the sashes. That's correct. So yeah, at the end of the day, that's all we're, at the end of the well, day, that's all we're removing. Well, by, by doing that, you're actually changing the size of the windows as well by leaving the frames in place. Um, Not by much, just about a half inch on the width and hardly anything on the depth because it's pitched at the same degrees of that window, and the base is only three inches and it's thick, the sill. So very little glass loss. You hardly notice uh, that it's even gone. It fits right back into the pocket in the frame of our window. It, 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 we're, we're, we're kind of getting, we're, we're kind of getting on the, the threshold. The, the first part of the discussion is always about whether or not it passes the threshold for uh, in effect, demolition of a particular piece of of a historic structure, and I I think that that what you've clearly heard from uh, from the city uh, as well as from the commissioner is that it, that it appears that there is not uh, significant support among the the commissioners to warrant uh, removal of this historic feature of the home. Um, I. And, and I, I don't think there's any way to get through to get over that threshold with the information that we currently have. 
There's an entirely separate issue of what an appropriate replacement would be and how that appropriate how that replacement would take place. But that's a discussion that we don't even get to until we until we get past the the point of saying yeah these things need to go. We don't start talking about the appropriate replacement is or what the appropriate details are um, or what the appropriate materials are. It, 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 we just we don't get involved with that other other than to express that that there are uh, a significant number of products on on a pre-approved list. Um, if that threshold of of removal is passed, uh, you know those things are pre-approved, and and anything else has to be you know type has to be specifically approved um, by the commission. But we we aren't going to start getting in, involved with. Um, whether this is an appropriate product and, and what the appropriate deal details would be on, unless we get past the uh, the removal of these products and uh, of these windows. And I don't see that we're getting there. I can't believe that there isn't somebody at uh, Columbus, Columbus Landmarks who knows of someone who could provide better insight to this. I, and I wonder if... Uh, so Jody Graken, who's now working for the society, um, might have insights about that. So I see that she's on the uh, on the meeting, but she hasn't been sworn in and didn't fill out a speaker slip. I don't think. Well, there were no speaker slips, so of course she didn't. Um, I, I don't really want. I mean. But she might be able to put the applicant into contact with someone at Columbus Landmarks. That is absolutely true, um, and I, and I also think that that uh, uh, you know Woodworks is in this business and provided a quote, and it it is possible that if there is sufficient supporting documentation that that is that can be provided by them to go along with that quote to explain what it is they're doing, they're proposing to to happen. Yep. Um, then. You know that that might also get us past it. And, and the um, homeowner can reach out to Jody through the society. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's what Commissioner Ferriel is is implying. Um, would I, I don't see any purpose to drag this on. Would someone uh, care to make a motion on this? Or would would the uh, applicant like to continue it? Well, very, very good point, and and let's let's let me explain that for for just a second. Thank you, uh, thanks, Ned. Um, uh, you can, and I and I think you've you've been through this uh, before. But if you request that the um, that the application be tabled or continued, then you would maintain your place in, in on the agenda. It would simply come back here. You can provide additional supporting information. Um, and, and we could kind of pick up the conversation where, where we're leaving it off now. Um, you can request that we, you can withdraw your application just outright and just not, not work it that way. Um, or you can uh, request that we vote in which case you have uh, several paths for um, appealing uh, what, what appears to be heading towards an unfavorable outcome uh, of a vote. So the first question goes back to the applicant, whether you would like us to vote on this or whether you would like uh, to, to withdraw it or whether you would like us to continue it. Would Woodworks, can I ask a question first? Would Woodworks uh, be a sufficient resource for you to evaluate or would we go down that road, have them do that and then have somebody on the commission or the whole commission uh, or parts of say, well, you know, do you need a second one, a third one? Uh, could you give me some guidance that and, you know, if, because if, if we can find the right company to do that for Mr. Ferguson, uh, I, I think we'd like the table. Yeah. Um, so to me, it, it, it would depend on the credentials and experience of the folks at Woodworks. So all I know about them is you have an estimate from them and they have a name that sounds like they work with wood. <laughs> That I, I mean, they, that just seems, <laughs> to be an expert on on window restoration. Yeah, they, I mean, this is the business that they're in, and and the quote that they provided in terms of of the amount and in term, you know, in, in terms of the six hundred dollars per window is kind of what would be expected, I would imagine. Um, so I I think that that 
it is entirely possible that that was a uh, would have been a, a a totally reasonable approach. And and in fact, if Woodworks comes in and says, "Listen, you know, if they're willing to put their name behind the fact that these things are not salvageable and not rebuildable, then that is something that obviously we would take." Um, okay, very we good. Then we'll go ahead and take. Yeah. We would give great weight to it. I'm not going to say, okay. uh, you know, I can't presuppose what a vote would be, but we would give great yeah. weight to it. Well, well, I appreciate that. that. That answers my question. So we will go ahead and table for now and we'll go down that road and see if Mr. Ferguson wants to continue this dance. Uh, but uh, for now, we'll table it and uh, uh, see if we can get them to give a uh, more detailed quote and give their opinion of wh whether those uh, will be uh, sufficiently operable or just uh, look better. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Mr. Chairman, item GV2103-1139 Schiller Avenue, I move to continue. Second. Thank you. Commissioner Thiel. Those in favor? Oh, aye. Sorry. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Mr. Panzer votes aye, the ayes have it. Mr. Chairman, might I suggest that uh, any further motions to continue is something we could easily do on an without objection basis. You're probably gonna have to remind me of that about four times, but yes, I appreciate long as you, it. As long as you don't mind me reminding you all. I do not mind you reminding mm -hmm. me. Let's go back for a moment to uh, agenda item number one, GB 21-04-020-526. Perfect, 526 South 3rd Street. Is there an applicant here? Yeah, I don't see the name popping up. Okay, we're gonna keep moving then. Um, I like this one because I have to recuse myself. This is agenda item number three, GV21-03-012646-7. South 5th Street. Um, I believe it's Commissioner Durst who would be uh, next online. And I have to recuse myself also. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, Ned and I are stopping video. Hi. Do we have uh, the owner or someone for? Yeah. Yes. Joe Kimner. Okay. Can you see me or no? I can see you now. All right. There you are. Hello. Okay. Can you How raise you? your right hand? Yes. Can you Do see you swear me? To... Yeah. Yep. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And can you state your name for the record? Joe Kiminer. Okay. okay. Jody. Hello? Okay, so no, uh, Jacqueline. Oh, that's <laughs> we're just talking about Jody. <laughs> uh, so this is another continued application regarding replacing windows. Uh, the applicant would like to replace uh, historic, historic windows with new Marvin clad double hun windows from the approved windows list. So the uh, historic two over two double hun wind windows appear to be in repairable condition based on the submitted photos um, that set has received. So at the February 16th business meeting, the commission noted, also noted that windows be, appear to be in repairable condition and also requested clarification on which Marvin ultimate window from the approved windows list is being requested. Uh, since the March GVC meeting, the applicant has submitted additional photos and videos of the windows as well as a windows assessment. Uh, so currently staff does recommend repair of the historic windows and also the installation of new storm windows and this is based on the standards for alteration and specifically numbers five or two five and six do you want me to start or does anybody from the committee have anything to say nope you can go ahead and respond okay um i know everybody's time is short here so i uh I learned from what you were asking me for, and I had a uh, company called the Wood Window Surgeon come and do a uh, report of the windows. The report, the basis, and I delivered to you was that the windows, in his opinion, need to be replaced. No other options, really. Um, any sort of repair. Uh, would not hold up long term. Um, so that is why my request is still the same as to go forward with an approved window by the commission and the um, after following up and getting the report. 
Um, I understand the idea around storm windows, but I would, um, and based off of what he recommended for the house long term, I would ask that um, window replacement still be um, my request at this time. Uh, the report and him walking around my house and going through every single window um, was the basis of why my request is the same. Am I missing I, I, the, the I, report? I, was the report mm -hmm. included in the agenda? The report was submitted to the committee, I want to say at least two weeks ago. I'm not Nothing. seeing the report in the materials that I have up on the screen. Well, let me you double check. Anything, it was, I only, I have um, two that were, or a, a report in the form of an Excel sheet. Does that sound right? Correct. Okay. That's, let how, me... that's how this business. So since there wasn't a approved vendor for wood window repair, I went out as you guys recommended and found based off of talking to my neighbors and a guy that was credible in the neighborhood and he submitted this report and basically his feedback to me after going through my house. And so that was basically what I was doing was following your instructions, providing the report and the recommendation of replacement. Okay. Let me see if I can't bring these up real quick. That should have been included in the application materials, but I think maybe given that it's an Excel form, it might've rejected them without me realizing it but i can be able i can share okay. that okay i'm just going to find it real quick and then once i do i will grab the sharing uh, tool and share those so we can see it on the screen here Can anybody, everybody see this on uh, the main screen? Yes. Okay. Is there more to the report or is it just this one page? It should have been two pages. I sent two different reports. Uh, stop sharing and then try to bring up the other one. Hang on, sweetie. Hang on. Yep. Ned, there you're not <laughs> There was language. There was critical language right there in the one you were showing to us a moment ago. Oh, mm -hmm. here we go.
So right there, the the third, fourth, third line down, in my professional opinion, the double hung windows in the above mentioned building need to be replaced. Midwestern usage. Mm -hmm. So, as I read this, the, the, <coughs> the, 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 okay. Continuation. Let's keep So is he saying you should replace them just due to energy bill concerns? No, he told when he wrote up the report and when he was at my, he said that they were unrepairable. And he's the wood doctor repair guy that I brought in that the report is. And I know he's a, maybe not, but this is the report that he was able to provide. Can you point I mean, us? Can you point it to where it says, it says they're unrepairable? He said that that's replacement. I mean, his wording is that his recommendation is replacement. I mean, if we want to nitpick his report, I mean, well, no, I'm not trying to nitpick. It's 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 the 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 reason energy consumption is not the reason for replacement in the guidelines, and he says they should be. We're, what we're trying to I, ascertain I, I understand. I understand. is, is he does he say they're needed to be replaced because of condition or because of energy concert conception? No, That's what he, he said that they were unrepairable. He wouldn't even charge me to repair them because he said it was it was throwing good money on something that's unrepairable. It will not it will not hold up. And he said, I'll put in the report that my recommendation is replaceable. And I said, OK. And so instead of telling him or anything with, I let him have his report exactly how, so I could submit it accordingly, not telling him what to write, but his recommendation at the end of the day is replacement and it's replacement for those two reasons. So, I mean, which I two feel reasons that he to wouldn't, even, he wouldn't give me a quote to repair him. So I couldn't even get him. I said, hey, can I get a, repo a quote to repair him? He said, no, I'm not going to charge you to repair these. These are unrepairable. Okay, thank you. So if you want me to go back and get a no bid from him, I just didn't think that was necessary when the report came back that his, re his recommendation was replacement from a guy who, repla who repairs wood windows. I mean, this is what he does as a business. And he said, no. So. I, I, I didn't think, I didn't think at this time, I was like, okay, this is the wood window guy. Jacqueline, and, are you able to, to bring the, the first page up again, please? I'm just going to read, I'm going to read it in its entirety out loud okay. for everybody. I think that that would be helpful um, to make sure we're all on the same page. Page one, assessment of old rope and weight, double hung windows at 646, 648 South Fifth Street, German Village. In my professional opinion, the double hung windows in the above mentioned building need replaced. The reasons for this opinion are this is inherently drafty design as it was used in a long period pre Civil War to after World War II, then energy was not an issue. Today, in this climate, these windows leak a lot of air, primarily at the meeting rails, the bottom rail, and through the pulleys. There is a large weight box on each side. If the windows, which is about four inches wide and as deep as the wall is thick, if you have balloon construction, much cold air will circulate in the walls and come out the opening spaces around the pulleys. You can add spring bronze J channels at the meeting rail, spring bronze at the side, weather stripping on the bottom of each sack, etc. You can go to the next page. This is about all we can do. This is a band-aid solution to a problem that will have to be addressed in the next few years, as energy prices are only going up. The commission has approved Marvin. In my opinion, at the Big three, Pella, Anderson, and Marvin, I would only always choose Marvin. I can spend a lot of Joe's money trying to weatherproof these windows, but I won't be happy with them, nor will Joe. In my opinion, new Marvin windows would lower energy bills, add value, value, value and comply with the rules of the commission. 
Correct. Can you? So what he's but so the reason, and I'm just trying to understand. What <laughs> I mean. Says. The reason he says, I mean, God, it, it's also, I mean, it says it there in the first things. He's saying that I, I could put a band aid on this, but it's not going to do anything. That's why he said that is saying the damage, that is the damage, not repairable. He says it in a way that I think you could look at that report and fairly say, okay, he's talking about two different things. He's talking about the repairs and the damage, and it's a band aid, it's not going to be long term. So, and then again, the I haven't, thing is I haven't given my opinion of the report. I'm just trying to understand what the report says. That's, um, that's how I interpreted it. So that's why I didn't get a no bid quote. That's why I was trying to. It sounds just by reading it and listening to Brent read it out loud. To me, it just sounds like he's saying there's no way I can make these windows energy efficient. The, yeah. Oh, man. So I'm gonna have he, to get he, him to come back. He doesn't talk about back. damage. He doesn't talk about rot. He doesn't talk about cracks, splinters, wood having to be replaced. He, he would not say that if he could just say, "Hey, we can fix it, so it's energy," and what the ones he would do, then that would be able to be done. So I, his, I think, his his overall request for a replacement from a guy that repairs wood windows. I mean, I I don't. I, I I think the report, yeah, if I would have, okay, I, I think the report says what the report says, and we can go forward. So this, this goes to my question about the background and experience of whoever we hear from about the windows. If, if, if the background is someone who does historic preservation work, on wood windows who says they can't be repaired that's one thing if it's a person who repairs windows solely for energy efficiency who says they can't be repaired to make them energy efficient that's a different thing that doesn't speak to the uh to the standards in the guidelines jeff you would acknowledge that I, the name of the company is the wood window surgeon and this is this was came back to my same point. So you don't have somebody that's certified. Then there is this. This is what I asked about last time. And I'm not trying to waste anybody's time. I'm trying to get through this based off of what you guys are asking me for. And then if anybody I bring in doesn't hit the credibility of your organization that has no person that is verified, this guy is like. I can only ask around the community, like you said, this guy got verified that he's done work in the neighborhood. I mean, I, I, and then there's no way to vet it. It's like, you understand a little bit, I'm trying to do everything that you guys are asking me for. You asked me to go out and get a guy that specializes in wood repairs. I did that. This is his report. He says that his recommendation is replacement. I can't like, I'm a little dumbfounded here. I'm not trying to get frustrated, but we can go ahead with the vote. I mean, I, I've done everything I can for this committee to be a, to be approved the way you're asking me for. The windows that you guys are asking for. I went out and got this independent person who specializes in window repair, which is really hard to find also. Somebody that is an expert in this space. I found him. I, I got the report done as you asked. I submitted it as is i mean it's like did so, you talk to the folks at columbus landmarks I, I i wasn't asked that from the last time we were on this meeting jeff i didn't know that was a requirement for us to do that not I a requirement so i'm sorry excuse me go ahead that, that's it i i know no the the answer to yours is no i i did not do that and I don't know if he is vetted out by them as an improved vendor by them. I don't know that. I don't. I suspect they don't have approved or unapproved vendors, uh, but I do suspect that they are a reliable source of people who can establish their credibility in restoring historic windows in accordance with 
historic standards in the German village guidelines, which of course are based on Department of Interior guidelines. I think that based off of the research I did on him, he was very, very credible. He was very professional. He had come through. He had told me about all the places in German Village he had done work on. The fact that he knew that the windows were pre-Civil War, <laughs> talked to his credibility of working on these. I don't think your average person who just does repair would know that. Um, he was very credible. I'll take, I'll take the fact that he that I vetted him out. And if, and if the wood window surgeon of Columbus is not credible enough for the German village commission, I'll take, you know, I'll have to live with it. But based off of what you asked me to do, I feel like I did everything. So I, I guess the question to go to uh, Teresa's point is the way the report reads it, it doesn't read as if he evaluated them from a historic preservation standpoint. That's the, tr that's the trouble I'm having. It reads as if he's evaluated whether or not they could be made energy efficient, which is not the purview of this commission. We are, we are charged to preserve uh, things that can be preserved. And, and I, I I, I, under, I understand uh, what you're. And I wonder if you would share the link with me for today's commission meeting. Uh, if you get this Hello? for the next few minutes, if you send that to me, that'd be great. I asked Jacqueline earlier this morning and just realized that she never shared it. Somebody's, to somebody's chiming through there, I think. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. So in, in this report, if you want me to do this report again, that's, that's pretty frustrating. I'm going to be honest. If you're just going to interpret his report as that only and none of the language around replacement, if you're just going to read it on, hey, there's nothing that that report says that checks the boxes in terms of replacement, then I mean, and can, then can you I, can you can you point me? I'm trying. I just, I just understand. here's here, fine. I'll have him come out again, and then his language. I mean, the guy is a root. He's not a. He's not Hemingway here in terms of writing up his report. There's probably some things that he, but he did say that his recommendation at the end of the day is to replace them. And if that's not, I mean, and if that's not because you guys think that the damage is enough, that's pretty hard when he says in the one sentence, which we're not emphasizing at all, is in talks when he says about the repairs, he says they're not going to work long term. And that is talking to the damage. So if we're not going to focus on that sentence, then I'm going to have to get him to come out again. I'm going to have to get a report again, because what I'm hearing is that his language around it is not sufficient enough for this committee. That's really disappointing for going through all the things that we've gone through and then the amount of time we're going to lose again. And then, I mean, what, yeah. what, what, what did you what did you not emphasizing? What we are like, you guys asked me to do a lot of very hard things to get done here, and I've done it. And I just feel like we're nitpicking his report when he is saying that he understands the guidelines. Mr. Kiminer, I think we're going a bit back and forth here. Um, so okay. what we're looking for is to find, you know, something that speaks to the condition of the windows themselves. And this, uh, the person who did the assessment, they may very well have something. Uh, that evaluates it and they may have the credentials. We just don't see, you know, what anything that speaks to specifically to the condition that it's beyond repair in that report. Um, and then if that person is unable to, I think the commissioner recommendation um, from the last meeting of speaking to Columbus Landmarks or to Jody Gration from the German Village Society would be helpful in pointing to people or to evaluating the uh, the windows person that you did find. So I think th those two things, if you want to, if you're still looking to continue uh, and to look into the repair, I think those uh, are, they're helpful points made by the commission. So this commission at this point, I know you can't tell me not to put a vote up, but in your opinion is this report is not sufficient enough to vote on. We, we so, could take a, We could take a straw poll if you'd like to see how people would vote. I. <laughs> I'm not so uh, fond uh, of straw polls, but I, th I think I'm a little, I think we I'm should a, ask the applicant whether he wants us to continue the meeting so he can maybe uh, uh, get someone I mean, I, from Columbus Landmarks to look at it, or maybe I mean, contact guys, the. 
guys. Is I'm this, sorry. I go right. ahead. Is all right. So I feel like every time on this, if it's Columbus landmarks and I get the report better and both say, yes, is that, is that the, is that the last of it? If it's a replacement and the landmark people, or is there another thing the, out there? That the report has know? to Joe, the report just has to stay state that in his professional opinion, the, the windows need to be replaced. And for these reasons, but the reason okay. can't be for energy right. efficiency. Okay. That's fine. Or I'll, for a I'll, higher market value of your house. It, it can't be any of the non-preservation issues. Okay. I will, I will get him back out. I will talk to the other person that you, to make sure this is all done. And I will push to the next meeting, which is when? May 4th is the next hearing and the business meeting is on April 20th. Okay. I look forward to seeing everybody on May 4th and so you, you would will, like us to continue your application? I would like to continue, absolutely. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion in, context, in connection with uh, GV 210312. Um, so to continue the application to the next agenda, to the next month. Do I have a second? Second. Hey, okay, are there any objections? Hearing none, I guess we're moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Jacqueline, could I could I make a request that uh, you send to that applicant uh, contact info for landmarks and for Absolutely. and for the society uh, to help him get advice? I think I think the challenge. I what we're I think what we're trying to ask is that we need a opinion on whether or not the, the windows can be preserved. And that's 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 specifically what we want, right? Yeah, I can absolutely send those contact information. Thank you. Do we do we have an a uh, as a commission uh, an opinion on what it means to preserve the windows? Is it strictly to preserve the windows so they don't deteriorate any further, or is it to preserve the windows and repair them back into working condition? I think it whether whether they are repaired into working condition is a matter of uh, at least to some degree whether the applicant wants working functional windows in, in terms of of uh, you know what we care about i would think is uh deterior you know continued deterioration of the historic fabric which includes not only the windows but what the windows are protecting so I think that's where you get into the functional window. You know, do they need to be weather tight? Well, yeah, because if they're not weather tight, the building's gonna get wet and you're gonna wind up going through what I'm going through up on the north side of town. Um, Jacqueline, would you would you buy that? Yeah, sorry, I had an email dinging at me, so I missed a little bit of it. Um, can you repeat that one more time, Jay? Sure. What, what I'm basically saying is, I, I mean, Trisha posed the question as, as to whether what we care about is, is the the um, ceasing degradation of the historic fabric, the windows, or whether we care about making the windows functional again. And my my reply to that is, um, we care about a ceasing the continued degradation of the historic fabric the windows but that leads to b in order to protect the historic structure in order to protect the the, the building the will the building the windows have to be functional windows so they have, have to, to be able to... water out or they aren't yeah. functional therefore right. you, right. you got keep to... the water out but not necessarily the cold air yeah i mean energy efficiency is, is uh, I think that can be for achieved. better or worse, not part of our thing. No, and it can I be would... achieved a couple of other ones. Sorry, arcane. I, I think it's water and air infiltration, but as far as thermal value goes, that's you know single plane glass and a storm window is you know about the minimum you can do. You can take it from there. And we've so, had cases where where people have put in uh, double pane windows in historic in historic sashes. Yeah, we have the guidelines speak in terms of repairing if necessary to make them sound and tight, not operable. Yep. 
Well, and, and it's sound and tight response to what Ned was just talking about in terms of keeping out moisture. Right. With with either vapor, water or vapor. And I think we can any supplemental information from the Department of Interior would be something we would we would consider as as yeah. as that part of that as well. Well, and that raises an interesting issue, and I and I don't know. I would ask Jody and Jacqueline to to look into that moving forward. And that is that, you know, how does the Department of the Interior feel about yanking out historic windows to replace them with more energy efficient, better perform, you know, high performing um, replacements? I, Ned's shaking his head, and I tend to shake my head too, um, because I don't think they're going to buy that. But no. I think, again, I think that that what you wind up with with the 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 National Park Service on, on this front is if they reach the threshold of having to be removed because they are no longer capable of being repaired to the point where they meet the requirements, then you you reach that threshold. You say we got to put new windows in. Then it becomes a question of what do we do? And that's an entirely different question than, you know, should we jump to that as being the solution to a problem that we haven't reached the threshold of? If I could, I, I would like to read, and I'm sorry if it, I don't want to belabor this, but this is, there is actually a section on energy conservation in our guidelines on page 30. That, that says specifically uh, to try to use storm windows over your building's old windows rather than replacing them with new insulated glass window units. Yeah, I mean, you heard that. I mean, you heard that. A little, I heard that a little while ago. Well, but uh, just to be specific, it's even outlined further. You know, yeah. I mean, that, that if you want to increase your energy conservation, this is what our guidelines say you should do. And the, the ironic part is that the date at which those were read, the Storm windows were pretty crappy at doing what they <laughs> just yeah. advertised as doing. Okay, we need to move on because I'd like to finish this in a half an hour before Anthony gets here. I, I know that's not happening, but <laughs> to um, move on, on to, to agenda item number four, applicate. Uh, sorry, uh, agenda item number four, application GV 21 03 01 317 East Kossuth Street. Tyler and Frederick, Mr. Allen and Mr. Fortman, are you here? Um, Tyler is. Okay. Uh, would you raise your right hand, please? You swear to tell the truth, all the truth, and nothing but. I do. State your name. Tyler Allen. Jacqueline, why has Mr. Allen been waiting through all of this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this application is a modification of a previous application from 2019, uh, and this is for a new rear door and transom. Uh, it was previously not approved due to the transom at that time uh, that was proposed being a direct set transom. So the new transom, uh, the newly proposed transom uh, has been proposed to fit the prior feedback and the new door would be wood, black in color and full light glass. And the existing door has had a past site visit from staff to ensure that the door was not historic and could not be repaired. So at the February 16th business meeting, the commission, the commission requested confirmation that the proposed Marvin door is wood and asked staff to confirm that the existing door is not historic or that a previous site visit had been conducted and noted that a section view of the transom would be helpful. So staff has found correspondence confirming that the prior staff was okay with staff approving a wood version of the previously proposed door if a direct set transom would be installed. Um, additionally, the applicant has confirmed that the proposed Marvin door will be wood and specifically that would be pine. So the new proposed door is full, a full light versus the previously proposed three fourths light door. So that is a slight change from the 2019 application as well. Uh, due to the condition of the door, the past staff visit and the rear location and lack of visibility, staff is supportive of replacing the existing door uh, with a direct set transom. So staff recommends approval with any clarifications to be submitted to staff uh, prior to issuance of a certificate. And that is based on the standards for new alteration, specifically number nine and number 12. Mr. Allen, do you have anything to add? Um, no, I think Jacqueline covered most of it. Um, but happy to answer any questions that come up. Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Allen? Would someone like to make a motion? Mr. Chairman, with respect to uh, 
application GV-21-03-013, 117 East Cossuth Street, Cossuth Street. I uh, move to approve the application as submitted. Second. Any questions on the motion? Commissioners, uh, those say aye if I call your name and you'll like it, the idea. Commissioner Seal. <laughs> aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Hands or votes aye. The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Mr. Allen, go forth and get yourself a new door. All right. And thank you very much. Thank you for yeah. waiting, too. Yes. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Yeah. Moving on. Oh God. Uh, moving on. Agenda item number five, GV 21-04-021-827 City Park Avenue. Here. Are the the sours are Evan Sour? I see your face right in front of me. Hold on for one second. I'm trying to get your thing. Okay, would you raise your right hand, please? You swear to tell the truth, all truth, and nothing but. I do. And you are. Evan Sauer. Jacqueline, why are we here? Okay, we are on number 5827 City Park Ave, and this is proposing to lay a cement pathway over the existing dirt or gravel area between the residence and the north property. And the applicant has noted that the pathway would be sloped to avoid sitting water against the buildings. So in response to commissioner questions from the March 23rd business meeting, the applicant has confirmed that the neighbor is okay with the proposal that the sloping of the pathway would be in the center and would move water away from the homes. The drain pipe will be buried below the concrete and the hardscape would extend 2.5 feet past the building and onto the sidewalk per the submitted marked photo that the applicant has submitted. So as submitted, the drainage of the water directly on the sidewalk is of concern to staff as this may cause a hazard on the public walkway and contribute to deterioration of the sidewalk materials. So staff does recommend the drainage be modified to avoid water draining directly onto that sidewalk. And this is based on the standards for site improvements, uh, specifically letter A. Mr. Sauer. I, I don't have anything to add. Are you okay with the staff recommendations? Yeah, I mean, ha so how would that work, I guess? So it, you don't want the, the cement to carry out to the sidewalk? That's what you're, I mean, it, it's very, it, it's not too much water. It's not gonna flood the sidewalk. Um, so how would that work as far as the drainage? How far away is the sidewalk? For, I mean, we're not looking at a photograph that gives us context here, item A. Yeah. And item yeah. B is the the long pipe that's running down the length of the distance between the two buildings is So I think Fox is from what? Giving me problems so that, again because there was a drawing the applicant submitted. So I'm going to have to share another thing real quick while you guys are discussing. Uh -huh. I don't know why it has yeah, so that, it. that pipe ties into the underground drain tile and goes out to the street. Um, that pipe is attached to uh, one of the side gutters, the downspout to the side gutter. So there, there are two pipes in the photograph that I'm looking at. One is going into what looks like a, a cast iron bell that. Is probably what goes out to the sidewalk. Correct. But the other one I can see turning down, but I can't see what happens when it goes down. It goes into the same underground tile that goes out to the street. So Why did you that. not drain the area that you're talking about draining into that same drain? What drain whatever? I'm sorry, drain whatever. The, why would you not drain the concrete that you're putting between the two houses <laughs> into that same drain? I mean, I suppose we can. The, the, how would that even work? I mean, would, so I'm going to have a concrete path. How would that? So we would have a separate drain. I don't know the answer to that. I really don't. Um, Hold on for a second. We may. Ah, yeah, we have, there we yeah. go. <laughs> what is the? Is the does the does the roof overhang? Yeah. There. So. The, uh, both do actually. So the greenhouse overhangs, and so does the roof. There's probably about, I would say, four inches or so in between. And so there's not going to be any a lot of water other than what, because the gutters are going to take everything out yeah. anyway. Correct. So you're yeah, getting you're not... getting four inches of water in the length of the house basically. 
Yeah, I mean, it's not a ton of water. It would not, it wouldn't flood the sidewalk if, if we drained it out that way. So, hey, this is Ned. I, I walked over and took a look at this. And I, number one, I don't think concrete's appropriate. I don't understand what the purpose is. As you can tell, it's right against the sidewalk. It's maybe two feet. And and that and it, just for your knowledge, you've got a gutter that's so short it could be drained to the front end to go down. You don't need that long pipe to bring the back all the way to the front. Um, it, it's maybe twenty five feet of gutter, maybe thirty, um, which is long enough for one run to the front. So I I don't understand the purpose of this at all. I really don't. The, the, I'm that, not in favor of it. The, the the pipe is not the issue, right? It's oh. it's the it's the surface water. Um, we get it's we both get that much. Well, we both get it in our basement. We get enough where it goes in our base. It's mm -hmm. it's directly in. It, there's enough water where I mean, it, obviously, it's rubble basements, right? So it's di it's directly mm -hmm. into our basement. It's not it's not a ton of water, but it definitely gets into our basements. Both of us is, is it or is it groundwater coming up? Well, it's not groundwater because it runs down the top of the wall, so it's not it, it's not coming up from the ground. So you but the the, the roofs overlap each other. I don't I understand how you're getting much water. And if that's if that's not, the answer, then I would say use some kind of impermeable membrane and and use some other material to get it out there, whether it's mulch or whether it's <laughs> brick, but not concrete. So why is concrete not appropriate in this case? Because we use brick for everything. Every other house has concrete in between their houses here. It's not I mean, if you want me to put brick there, we can talk about brick, but, um, you know, the only other thing I could, maybe a French drain or something like that, but, yeah. it, you know, it's, uh, okay. I mean, I, I, I guess I disagree slightly with Ned in that, in that the area between the houses is so mm -hmm. far from you, I wouldn't have. I don't think I would have an issue with there being concrete back there and and it being dished, but certainly not running out past the facade of either of the you know, to mm -hmm. past the front of either of the houses. That that would yeah. be not Jay, be something. Jay, it's it's very visible. I'm not gonna. Is it? I I'm, yeah. you, know, I, you, you can see what I'm looking at. Yeah, I know it's it's very yeah. visible. You're you're um, standing right there. It's two feet from the edge of the sidewalk. That's all. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm okay with not taking it past the house. That's fine. Um, if that's one of the issues. I, totally <laughs> different point of view. I have less concern about the concrete myself. I, I, I don't really myself. Mm -hmm. But what I would say, what I would be concerned for you, uh, Mr. Sauer, is that if if the water is actually coming from somewhere else, you've just put concrete over top of it. Uh, um, have, have you investigated? Have you dug? I, I'm just more stepping back from my commission role and actually concerned about your creative you sure. might create more of a problem yeah. for yourself no uh, we we did we we did there's um the the north house the greenhouse has underground tile too we scoped that um everything looked fine we, we've been dealing with this for you know, two years with the water um, it's hard to figure out sometimes where it's coming oh from. yeah so, you know yeah. i i i agree 100 percent, and it's um i'm just looking for the right solution really it's Yeah, I mean, I'm okay. Personally, I don't, the concrete doesn't bother me too much, but that's just me. But I mean, what I would see is the, is the concrete ending in a drain, that, you know, back set yeah. between the houses. Well, so then what that would do, Mr. Sauer, is rather than having that, that, that pipe running the whole length, you take the concrete, slope it, and then put a little, what would be a equivalent of a yard drain, but it's not a yard, right? A, a floor no. drain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that would capture your water. And drain it right. out. It would look more attractive. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I mean, I, I know that's not the point of this. That's the other issue is the walk too. I mean, I know that's not, you know, not necessarily the overall concern, but right now it's just dirt. So um, I'd be in favor of that to get rid of that big long pipe myself. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm definitely getting rid of that somehow, <laughs> whether it's being buried or not. Um, if, okay. All you got to do is slope the gutter. Yeah. To the front. That's all it takes. Yep. And do you know that your gutters aren't overflowing and causing water to come down from the gutter into that area? Yeah, I mean, mine are, mine are brand new. I mean, mine are a year old. 
um, the house was renovated, you know, fully renovated about a year ago. Mm -hmm. So mine are, are completely, and I just had them cleaned out too. Um, so they're not clogged. It's gotta be fun to get in there to clean those. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun to do lots of stuff with that, really. <laughs> anytime, anytime something needs to get in there. Um, I, I can't imagine pouring concrete in between that's in that over. small space. It, it's and, labor intensive, yeah. Well, and the, and the key would be if you do that is to make sure you get the positive slope on it to drain everything to the drain that you'll be adding at the, you know, at the front of the house that ties into your underground connection through to the curb. Sure. Okay. Also, I mean, it's, concrete, you're supposed to joint in a square yeah, pattern square. to control the mm -hmm. cracking. You're going to, if you, so it's going to be, I don't know how you joint the concrete. I don't know if you're pouring just a monolithic slab. Yeah. It's, it's a you tricky might, situation. Yeah. You may be better off to put a perforated pipe down through the center of that space and aggregate above it. And tie it and make drain. Like a French yeah. drain. French drain type yeah. Deal. yeah, you're right. Do a French, do a French drain. Yeah, put a, mm -hmm. put a membrane below it and then yeah. put a perforated pipe yeah. in. And, yeah. gravel, and then yeah. put gravel on top of it and let it run into yeah. the same drain. And yeah. yeah. That was, I mean, that was the other option. Yeah. That might put your drain in a sock. You know, make sure yeah, it's yeah. in a oh, sock yeah. and. Well, that's that's, expensive that's probably too. your least expensive and most effective option here. Okay. Right. You right. want to explore that and, and, and table this or, or withdraw it? What are you thinking? Can I, um, is there, can I revise it to include the French drain? Well, do, I don't think we have to approve the French drain because it wouldn't be visible. Is that right, Jacqueline? I think it would at most be a staff approval. Yeah, I okay. would say probably a staff approval. Okay. And if, it, if it turns out it doesn't solve your problem, it would be a heck of a lot easier to reverse. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that, you're right. You're right. I mean, that's, that was one of my, one of my concerns. Okay. Um, I will explore that, that option. Let's, uh, let's just continue this then. And if it turns okay. into a staff approval, it will just disappear from our agenda and come through as a staff approval. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, okay. item GB 2104-2127 City Park Avenue, I move to continue. Second. Those in favor, Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Ferrio. Jeff, you're on mute. Jeff, you're still on mute. I am. I got to find there my you mouse. Go. You got it. Okay. <laughs> so I don't object. So I approve. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner McCoy. <laughs> I'm Commissioner Foley. I don't even know what the right word to say is. I, I know. <laughs> I. <laughs> or you could say, ah. Um, okay. Yes. Oh, the, the, the uh, I, Commissioner Panzer votes aye. Um, ayes have it. It is uh, continued and probably to be turned into a um, staff item. Thank you, Mr. Sauer. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Okay, moving on. Agenda item number six GV 2104022 1050 Jaeger. Yeah, Hello. You have staff well, working on. Okay. I'm Chair Wickham as well. I'm sorry, say that again. You have Joseph Wickham as well. Come oh, on. good. Oh, there we are. Would you raise your right hands, please? And and Tony Hudson. Oh, good. Well, we need to see. Wow, this is gonna get slightly confusing, but <laughs> all everybody raise your right hands. You swear to tell the truth, all the truth, and nothing but. I do. I do. I do. State your names, please. Uh, Tony Hudson. Stephanie Wick. <laughs> Stephanie Wick. <laughs> I, I was waiting for that to happen. Trying to see who's going to lead. Let's go alphabetical. Joseph Hudson, please. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph Wick, I'm sorry. Joseph Wick, I do. And? Stephanie Wick, I do. Excellent. Jacqueline. Why is this gaggle gathered? 
Okay, so this application has previously been seen as a conceptual um, involving the proposed uh, addition and demolition. Currently today it is for an action item and just for demolition of a single story addition at the rear of the home. Uh, so the feasibility of the plan to construct the new addition will depend on the removal of the existing addition and modern updates to the existing addition uh, over the years have included vinyl siding at the exterior, an updated wiring, kitchen renovation with wood flooring over plywood subfloor. Uh, the walls are uh, the one in, and one and a half by three and one half inches with drywall and stud walls. The existing main brick home has a stone rubble foundation and a two by eight inch floor joist and wood plank subfloor. The existing addition has a block foundation uh, one and a half by nine and one fourth floor joist and a three fourth plywood subfloor. So a previous conceptual application for the new construction demolition of the rear addition was reviewed at the February 2nd GVC hearing. And at that hearing, the commission asked for clarification uh, about uh, as far as, uh, sorry, I got a little extra stuff in here. Item uh, as far as whether uh, evidence that the rear addition is historic or how much of it has been replaced. So the rusticated concrete block foundation is consistent with foundations installed in the early 20th century and the dimensions of the structure appear to be remain intact. However, much of the historic fabric and character defining features do appear to have been replaced and that's including siding, windows, exterior doors, interior walls, and possibly flooring. Uh, so staff does recommend approval with any clarifications to be submitted to uh, staff for review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate, and those are based on the standards of demolition. And I'm also hoping that Box has finally up uploaded my updates this time because I did find a previous application um, from back when in which the pre the rear addition was proposed to be demolished. It was approved at that time, and the reason for approval was that the rear addition was not found to be historic. Unfortunately, there are not the you know, the reasons, reasons or rationale for the commission from that time that survive. Um, but I did. There we go. So it does have that in there. Okay. I, this is a very peculiar um, needle to thread, but I think that um, the the fact that you've provided the 1999, sorry, the 1999 um, application uh, gives us a little wiggle room. Um, normally, we do not approve demolition without approving. Uh, what's going back in this place? We, we we don't typically approve just demolition. Although this is an addition, so you could probably argue that this could be approved if you wanted to plant grass back there. Um, however, in this particular case, we do have the fact that back in 1999, the application was submitted. Demolition of this uh, addition was approved by this commission. Um, and signed off on by the then historic preservation officer, Diane Cole. Um, I, I, I look at this almost as a, and, and not that we would always agree to this. I think it's up to each commissioner to, to determine that, but in a weird way, this is coming back 20 years later and saying, we want to do what we asked for 20 years ago. As a reference point, um, we are aware that the homeowner's husband passed away, and that's why they did not move forward with their planned renovation. Yeah, you just brought me down. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a really sad story, actually. Um, um, do you have anything to add? Does the applicant have anything to add? Now, I think uh, I think we presented what we have and um, felt like during the uh, review previously, um, there didn't seem to be any other questions from the uh, board members. Jacqueline, Jacqueline, is there a time period on a previous certificate of appropriateness or is this one actually? Oh, what was that? Yes, no, it, expi it expired in 2000. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. ancient history, but it, but it is history. <laughs> There is. I yeah. just thought it might be relevant to see. Although, unfortunately, I don't have the specific rationale that the commission had for why they thought it was not historic or what their opinions of it was. It just had this document. And again, not you know, we're certainly not bound to that, but it it's 
because uh, among other things, uh, applicant, uh, um, guidelines have been rewritten and altered since then. Standards have have been changed over time, but I, I think that this is a uh, this is a good um, indication that this has been looked at previously and and found to be a reasonable request. Got it. Commissioners, any questions? Is, yeah, I, of course. I mean that that was twenty years ago. My concern is to be consistent. I don't think we should approve this until we know what's replacing it. And I don't think approving this as demolition is going to gain anybody any any time. I mean, I, I probably agree that it's not going to be appropriate mm -hmm. as long as we get an appropriate addition. But I think we got to be consistent in how we deal with demolition. Twenty years is twenty years ago. That ran out nineteen years ago. So um, I, 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 have, I have a way to think. I have a way to think about. Well, maybe not. Maybe yeah. not. But, my my but, question would be is like, yeah, in the. Uh, the new addition project, are they keeping the foundation or is that being demolished as well? Who knows? Um, the, uh, that foundation would be removed. And, and I can't see any harm in, in letting this move on until we see what the design is. I think that and and a big part of me agrees with you entirely. But a part of me also is concerned that one we express in some definitive way that upon approval of it upon approval of or as part of the approval of an addition that we would allow this to be demolished because um, you know not having mm -hmm. that assurance frankly the applicant doesn't you know can't really determine what to design and any applicant has that condition jay uh, and i don't think we have to show a good faith effort here i mean i, I think we probably all agree eventually if we see something that's appropriate to replace this we would approve it and, and I think we can wait till then. Yeah, because the, right, yeah, because this one doesn't have a uh, demolition order. I mean, we've done that no. before when there was a structural problem and it just had. Oh, that's down. that's something else entirely. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the concern is like they take it down and then nothing goes back. I, you know, I, we won't be doing that. It's our kitchen. You know, <laughs> we, we can't survive without a kitchen. Can you can you illuminate for us why you you want the approval of the demolition now rather than when you have can that that might help us understand a little better. Well, well, sure, I'll kind of, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, this was the process we were kind of told in our in our last uh, previous design meeting. Um, it was brought to our attention that this was on the uh, 1920 Sanborn map and that we would need to get demolition. Um, I had spoke with Jacqueline and and. Uh, and they had asked for more information and this is where this is where we are now um and without the you know without the demolition approval we really couldn't go further with a design if 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 we weren't going to be granted that it it uh it doesn't allow us to expand in the back of the house the, the problem the, the problem we're facing and i'm going to see if i can find it real quickly and i know i'm not going to be able to i thought we've done this as a conceptual before that that people have come to say conceptually, are you okay with the idea of demolishing the rear addition? Yeah, and that would that would give you confidence to move forward with the next step. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we really are seeking the confidence because, as a parent, um, we need the two story addition in the back to be functional so that the bedrooms can all be connected. And without it, and having like a saddle walkway between our bedroom would be separated from the children's, which is a non-starter. So that's really where we were seeking the confirmation that that as we plan our design that we will come back for approval that we could do the two story connected addition to the rear of the home because the porch uh, kitchen area would not be considered historic. Yeah, yeah. Stephanie, my, my concern is the commission is consistent, which is demolition is approved after we approve what the addition is. If you are you looking for a conceptual that this ought to be removed. I'm there. I just don't think it needs to be an action that we vote on today. 
And uh, and I will I will I, 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 well first of all let's go th let's go through the commissioners and and see and I'm not going to ask for a straw poll particularly, um, but let's see whether there are any objections raised or whether people agree with with what Ned has to say. Teresa, yeah, I would prefer to to call this a conceptual say it's okay to demolish, but want to see what's coming back. Okay, Jeff. Yeah, I'm with uh, I'm with Ned and Charissa on this. I'd prefer to maintain a consistent posture. Karen, I would say uh, that as a conceptual review, that we would agree that this structure could be demolished, um, predicated on acceptable plans or plans that meet guidelines for the new build. Brent? Same as everyone else. Mm -hmm. Okay, so while you don't get a, a vote, and, and or at least a, I, I think that what we're heading towards is suggesting that it might be best to continue this, you now have six commissioners on the record at a public meeting saying that None of us has a problem with the demolition of this addition once we have an approved or approvable plans for what goes back in its place. Does that give you the level of confidence that you need? Um, yeah. I'd, I'd like to hear from the homeowners. It, I, 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 it does for me. It, no. does for, it does for me. The question that I have is. Um, do we need to design around the foundation or are you saying that we can move forward with our design with no constraints on the um, kitchen addition as it exists? Just just the guidelines. I, I believe that what you've heard is that the addition and, and what Ned uh, Commissioner Thiel just said is that uh, yes, you do not need that is correct. You do not need to work within the constraints of the existing foundations. However, you must work in conformance to all of the guidelines pertaining to additions to historic structures. Okay. So, you know, that mm -hmm. that that, okay. that is an entirely different issue. And one that, that we can't you know can't even talk about that until we see the designs. Okay. Um, therefore, I come back and ask the question whether you would like to continue this application for submission of additional information, which one would presume would be a design. Uh, yes. Motion to continue application GV2104022, 1050 Jaeger Street. Is there a second? Second. Second. Without objection. Hearing none, uh, the application is continued. Jay just added three minutes to the meeting. Save three minutes. <laughs> okay, but I remember, yeah, I, you know, I remember. Um, okay, agenda <laughs> item number seven, application GV21-04-02310, 23 City Park. Who have we? Yep, um, Mike Obitens, owner. Uh, Commissioner Panzer. Yeah. This is Chair Harkey. I am on the call now. Um, oh, wow, I love it. Okay. We're <laughs> just beginning agenda item number seven, and I am relinquishing gratefully the chair to Commissioner Harkey. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, so, as stated, GV21 04 023. Uh, we have an applicant, 1023 City Park Avenue. Uh, the applicant, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Uh, Jacqueline, uh, please state your name for the record. Uh, Mike Oppitans. Thank you. Jacqueline. Okay, so this application is regarding landscaping and hardscape. Uh, the applicant would like the area between the sidewalk and road uh, to be level with the sidewalk. They would like to add a tree, a new ground cover, and granite block edging. Uh, for the front yard garden area, the applicant would like to add new plantings per the design specs, bluestone pavers, a new urn, and no change in elevation. 
For the backyard, the applicant would like to add a new bluestone patio and plantings per design and new garden beds also per the design to maintain the current brick patio. So at the March 23rd business meeting, uh, the commission asked to confirm if the tree lawn, which is the area between the sidewalk and road, is the area proposed to be leveled. Uh, the commission also requested additional photos of the tree lawn area now that the snow has been melted to understand how the area appears as existing and the applicant has submitted an additional photo. Uh, the commission noted that the plan calls out a granite cobble border and that the that typically the commission would want to make sure that this is flush. The commission also recommended that plantings be kept a few inches away from the curb and adding some kind of hardscape along the back of the curb to avoid the plantings being trampled on people who are parking out front. The commission also wanted to make sure that the parking area is not obstructed and asked to confirm that the hardscape in the rear yard will be on a permeable base as opposed to concrete or other impermeable materials. So staff recommends approval with any clarifications needed to be submitted to staff prior to the issuance of a certificate and that's based on the standards for site improvements letter A. Thank you, Jacqueline. Does the applicant have anything else to add? Mr. Vontis? Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. So I was just going to say the only thing I would add is that we're comfortable with the recommendations that the commission made at the no, last time. So we'll make we'll make those adjustments to the plan. All right. Uh, questions, comments from the commission. Well, ju just to be clear, what what we're talking about is that for an area from eighteen for an area of eighteen inches from the face of the curb, that hardscape go go back level so that you can open a door to a car and get and get out. And we we re have required that for quite a number of years now, um, in order because there, it's legal parking on that side of the street, and you can't you know we can't obstruct the legal parking. Yep. Yeah, that's that's fine. You know, right now, actually, you can't even get out of a car. Yeah, that's, of the, that's what yeah, we want to try to get yeah. back. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I think that makes some sense. I parked my car there, <laughs> so. <laughs> well, it'll save the bottom of your door from getting all dinged up. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that photo there, that's, if you look at the property right next to you, that's what we're trying to avoid is that mm -hmm. stone piled up there, so. Yeah, yeah, that won't, that won't happen. Any other questions or comments? Commissioner McCoy, any any last gaping comments on your end? No. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I have, have a motion on agenda item number seven, GV 21-04-023 to approve um, as amended by the applicant to have level hardscape 18 inches from the curb line. Uh, and to submit changes to staff. Second. Are there any questions on the motion? Uh, hearing no questions. Uh, Commissioner Panzer, what was your uh, your uh, method of dealing with the last application? I had a car from the I, I only uh, for something that's being continued. I, I've been. I, I started doing the without objection, but I've just been reading down the, the list for anything that needs to be voted on. Okay, just want to make sure I uh, following what the, the standard you set here. Okay. Right. Uh, no questions on the motion. We'll go ahead and we'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Farrell. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. And Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes eyes well, eyes have it, motion passes. All right, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, moving on to item number eight, GV-21-04-024, 175 East Deschler Avenue. Do we have a... Uh, yeah, Scott there, Remus. There we go. I'm looking for your face. Um, I've set my... Video said it was on. I you see you. Yeah, okay. it scrolled over a little bit. <laughs> All right, uh, Sorry, I please... can't see myself, so I don't know if I'm, I'm in my car, so I don't know if I'm in video or not. No, no worries. You please so... raise your right hand and put it by your ear so I can see it. There we go. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole <laughs> truth, nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Scott Remus. All right, Mr. Remus. Thank you very much, Jacqueline. Yep. 
Okay, so this application was previously reviewed conceptually and is now coming before as an action item. Uh, the application involves installing a limestone pool coping and bluestone patio around a new pool, and the patio would have a permeable aggregate base. So in response to commissioner questions from the March 23rd business meeting, um, including requests for confirmation that the area shown in the plan to the left is lawn, uh, and whether the curving line is meant to be planting and whether code will require fencing for the pool, the applicant has submitted a revised landscape plan that labels the space to the left, uh, confirming that the area is lawn. And the applicant has noted that the curved lines around the perimeter are the existing bed lines and that none of the plant beds will be changing. So the applicant has said that normally the code for a pool fence is 48 inches. However, if a pool has a retractable cover as the current uh, proposed pool will have, the fence height can be lower than 48 inches. And since um, this will have a retractable cover, the existing fence does fit code requirements. So staff recommends approval with any clarifications to be submitted to staff uh, prior to approval. All right, uh, Mr. Remus, anything else to add? No, I, I think, yeah, um, nope, nothing to add. All right, uh, questions, comments from the commission? Commissioner McCoy, any landscaping questions or comments from you? Commissioner McCoy, if you're, if you're speaking, uh, you muted over there. The, sh the shrubs that show up in the plan um, by the porch, are those yeah. existing or are those new replacement? No, that that's not included in the. Um, that's just going to be empty bed for um, for now, unless they decide to plant something there. That I, that was just a suggestion on my part. Um, okay. It's not a part of the scope of the work. That I mean, it, it is. There'll be a bed there, but I don't have um, a specific plant named or anything like that. In, in my in my brain, I'm thinking something like a hydrangea, but um, mm -hmm. but that's not part of the scope of the project that we're doing. Okay. Anything else, Commissioner McCoy? Nope. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion on application number eight. Agenda, sorry, agenda item number eight, application GV21 04 024 175 East Dashler Avenue to approve as submitted. Second. Are there any questions on the motion? Hearing none, we'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Farrell? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving ahead to item nine GV 21 04 025, 739 South 3rd Street. I'm here. All right. Uh, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And please state your name for the record. E.J. Lieberman. Thank you, Mr. Lieberman. You're welcome. All right. Jacqueline. Okay. This application is proposing to install a temporary patio, including adding a 12 by 36 foot patio, although I think that has been amended to a 10 by 36 foot patio in front of a restaurant that will include five to six tables to be used for dinner service um, Tuesday through Saturdays in the evening times. So the work would include installing a temporary fence, temporary tables, and landscaping, similar to submitted example photos. Um, the temporary fence may would be about 30 inches in height. No awning or umbrellas would be installed. The trees, benches, and monoliths would be removed. And the applicant also has amended the application to ask to retain the existing vestibule at the front door uh, and to have exterior painting uh, involving repainting the wood area on the front of the building and the trim would be painted black uh, as it is currently, and the wood would be ferro and ball caulk green per the submitted example. So in response to commission feedback from the business meeting, the applicant has noted that they did not realize approval was needed for the vestibule that has been installed beneath the existing awning and would like this to be included as part of the application to retain that vestibule. So the vestibule was installed as a windbreak to keep cold air from rushing in during the winter time. Uh, the applicant has noted that the city owns the trees, which are Bradford pears and considered to be invasive, invasive species. 
uh, and that the city will be removing the trees. The old trash can, uh, also referred to as the monolith, and the benches were owned by the landlord and have already been removed. The benches were freestanding and not anchored into the, the brick. Uh, the applicant would like to avoid anchoring any fencing and to use a base if the fence is wrought iron, or alternatively to use planters as a fence with plants, and they've submitted some example photos of what that would look like. The applicant would like to make the patio a seasonal patio and re remove it during the winter months. And the applicant has submitted some additional photos uh, as well. So the applicant has adjusted the size of the patio, I believe, to be 10 by 36 feet, uh, noting that the sidewalk is 18 feet wide and that the city's right of way guidance specifies leaving uh, six feet of walkway for the public. Uh, but the applicant feels this minimum may be tight uh, for the public to walk along, so has shrunk the patio size to accommodate more public walking space. So staff generally recommends approval um, as. Uh, with any clarifications being submitted to staff, uh, perhaps with the exception of the vestibule. Um, oh, that's our condition to recommend recommend removal of the temporary vestibule, and that is based on the standards for site improvements. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, Mr. Lieberman, anything else to add? Uh, no, I just had a question about the vestibule and um, what the what what process I need to go through to. Um, bring that back next winter. Obviously, during the nice months, um, we don't need a windbreak uh, for cold air. Um, so I don't know if you recommend just refiling for that vestibule at a later time. Um, it's fully removable. We, we were planning on getting it removed in the next um, next few weeks anyway, as the cold weather has hopefully passed us. Um, so that whole front part just like comes right off. There's a few screws that anchor it into the building, and that's it. Um, so it. it do you just recommend that I refile later on to get that put up for the winter, or is that something we can talk about today? Or like, what do you recommend for that? So I would, uh, I'd deflect this one to either Commissioner um, uh, Thiel or Commissioner Panzer for just due to longevity on the commission. Uh, if we have done a a permanent seasonal uh, application approvals. Jay, I don't think we have the closest thing that we could get to would be um, a tent structure over a patio for a restaurant. And I don't know if this wouldn't fall into that kind of same thinking. I, first of all, yes, I, I agree. I, I don't think we've ever done any a permanent seasonal thing. It, it, it comes back every year. Um, a couple of years ago, we, we did approve, ultimately, I think, approve uh, kind of a recurring seasonal tent, uh, which is the, the one that's over at Barcelona, which is that's the one that, that I think Ned's talking about. Um, I will tell you, we have a bit of a, there, there are a couple of issues with the, the vestibule that you've, that you've done. Um, there are at least two that I can think of. One is, um, several years ago, one was applied for and soundly rejected over at the Sycamore. Um, now, I, I don't recall offhand whether that one was going to be temporary or permanent, um, but it it got nowhere fast. Um, that That's item A. Item B is you're building that out on the city sidewalk. So you need a, a different authorization from the city. I mean, you, you need authorization from us because it's it, it's attached to it as far as structure, but you need uh, uh, occupy. I mean, you're occupying part of the public way, um, and that gets into the city. I guess you know into the, the city, and I don't know whether it's traffic or who it is. Um, it's actually an application for a lease for the land. Um, it's the information's available on the City of Columbus website. I mean, it's kind of the same thing that you'd have to do for the area for the seating area, I would assume. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. Um, yeah, I, I'm happy to go through the, the motions on that. I have to plead ignorance. I, I didn't know that that would be an issue to put up and, and uh, the consultant that that what we went through never mentioned anything about getting anyone's approval for it. So I, I wasn't trying to do um, kind of slide one by on anyone. I think I think yeah. that that uh, I think you it would make everybody it would make my my mind rest easier to see that go away and to see it presented um, to the commission in a in a more proper and orderly manner 
um, so that it can be evaluated for reinstallation next year. Um, you know, once, once that goes away, the idea of the patio becomes I think, a little more palatable to everyone because it's not a matter of asking forgiveness. It's truly a matter of asking permission. Of course. Do we, do we know what this fence structure is going to look like? So we we presented two options. Um, we're definitely leaning heavily towards uh, the planner box option, although um, I think it would look really nice. The picture that you're seeing right now, it has a wrought iron um, surrounding that also happens to match the wrought iron at our next door neighbor's property. Um, I've already gotten a few quotes on people kind of mimicking uh, that exact same looking structure. Uh, I think either one would look really handsome. I'm okay uh, to go with whatever y'all recommend. Um, I would prefer to have planner boxes as the surrounding, but I'm totally okay doing it with. I, I, would, I would suggest you have two issues with planters that, that you need to think about. One is they occupy a lot more space than a fence does. Sure. So you're immediately taking away at least a foot of your patio space. Um, and getting rid of those planters in the wintertime and finding a place to put them and moving them yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Have a good time with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was something I brought up to my designer on the issue as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I love the idea, but but <laughs> it's not his fun. problem. Yeah. And I'm curious as to the the the, the um, I'm sorry the just lastly that the the fence that that is shown in the uh, photographs that we're looking at. I can't tell how it's supported. It kind of looks like it's buried in the, you know, in the bricks. Sure. It's secret overhead, Jake. Sure, that's our that's the neighbor's patio, and that's a permanent structure. So, the, or sorry, our neighbor's fence rather, uh, and that's a permanent. No, no, structure. no, no, no. The, no. The, the patio fence that that was shown as an example. Um, if you can go back to the one that shows. Yep, that, that one. one. Yeah. So, I think it's supported it's overhead. Right back up above. Yeah. Oh yeah, you think that's the only. Mm -hmm. uh, that wouldn't be our plan. Um, I, I think that it would be a standalone structure, whether it's putting uh, feet that are made out of the same wrought iron or uh, discrete concrete um, to put it into so that it's not damaging the brick underneath. Um, the, 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 problem, the problem with feet or a base is it's going to be a tripping hazard. Uh, that's true if we uh, work it into our architecture of how the tables sit out there. I mean, trust me, I don't want anyone tripping on our property either. Um, yeah, I, I think that that's something to, to consider, but uh, very solvable. I, I mean, I'd like to see something that, that these things can't move back and forth so they stay aligned in a straight line the whole summer. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, we haven't gotten the final design done for exactly what the fence material is going to be yet. If you have any recommendations, we're happy to do it. Um, I mean, we're, we're kind of at the point where I didn't want to get any quotes completely done until we had the um, the approval for the patio. You know what I mean? Like, we, we don't have the, the cash to just put at people for doing conceptual drawings of these things. So um, I have a couple of questions. Um, does your building sit on the right of way? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand. I, I don't understand the the question. Likely yes. <laughs> yeah. So the to 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 put the question in this terms, uh, the building there's going to be a, a a a property line that exists somewhere on your property, um, and then beyond that property line is the city property. Which would be the right of way, uh, the street and sidewalk curb. Um, and so the question is, does your building run right up to that property edge, and then everything in front of your building becomes city property? I, we all believe, I believe, I think we all believe that that is the case. Looking down, uh, image two of the packet, everything else seems to line up to that. Thank you for the clarification. To, uh, I, I honestly don't know the answer to that. Um, the landlord would know better than I do uh, where our property line begins and ends. Yes, three different yeah. surveyors are going to give you a different line. Um, <laughs> but I think I think that for the sake of argument, I think you can assume that the building sits on the property line. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd be surprised if it so, were, if it weren't. So the the concern that I have is: it, does the city intend when they take the Bradford Pair down to replace a tree? Because as much as I love outdoor patios. Um, 
I am not in favor of a tree going down and not being replaced. So Karen, the, tree, the tree is gone. <laughs> the trees are gone. The tree is gone. Okay. They've <laughs> taken them out. Yep. And, and to be completely honest with you, the the tree removal was not my um, scope or my mm -hmm. permit. That was between the landlord and the city. Um, so I was just told that they were going away. That was that you mm -hmm. know I was, to, I was trying to figure out how to do the patio out there, and I didn't see any way that we could do it. And the landlord said, "Well, those trees are going away. You see, they're marked in blue. They're going away." Mm -hmm. So that that's what caused me to even put in the application because it wouldn't have been feasible if the right of way for pedestrians wasn't uh, adjacent to the street. Um, like the patio, it has to hug the, the building for it to be legal for us to do it. Uh, so I, I understand where your concern is. Unfortunately, I don't have a good answer for you because um, it wasn't in my scope to get those trees removed. Okay. So Karen, I would think for this application, we have to treat him as if that's not part of yeah. the conversation. God, I'm glad that trash can's gone. It was nasty. <laughs> I didn't know that. We, I didn't know that that was the landlord either. We would have removed it six months ago. <laughs> so, so, to me, it looks like the only thing we have to approve is the exterior painting because there's no fencing or anything else to approve yet. Well, and and I guess he's trying to get some direction on whether or not we're okay with the idea of a patio here. Um, which perhaps we can treat that part as a conceptual is what you're getting towards Ned? Yeah, kind of, because it's it comes down to what the fence is. That's I'm I'm not concerned about the patio. That's something between him and the city and right away and all that stuff. I'm concerned about what the fence looks like and how stable it is and all that stuff. So so Mr. Lieberman, if I may, I think we're we probably should separate your application into approval of the painting. Which I don't know if that's even actually something we have to do. No, I don't think um, it is. <laughs> which would make that staff approvable and then move your other portion into a conceptual review to tell you that generally speaking, I, and I'm speaking for the commission and you guys can chime in if you disagree, we're all okay with the patio if if the fence is appropriate. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just continue this thing and have it have the painting part of it disappear and then he'll come back with a fence. Uh, can I Good. get back there for one second? Um, we're really against the clock here. We are in patio weather. I'm sure you understand opening a restaurant mm -hmm. in August in the middle of the pandemic was not the best thing that we've ever done. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we didn't really have a choice. We already had a letter of intent signed. I had managers moving from out of state to the area, so we had to go forward. It would be a death sentence to us to not be able to get revenue any way that we can and this patio like the prospects of it and what it does for our bottom line it would 100 percent get us through i understand your concerns about the patio i have the same concerns I, unfortunately we just haven't gotten to the point where we've worked out exactly what that system is yet but it will be secure i don't want it moving i'm sure that anyone who's been into the establishment knows that we do everything mm -hmm. at the top notch um yeah, unfortunately, I just don't have the exact answer for you, but we've given two good options what it could look for. I share your exact same concerns about having planters out there. What do we do with them in the winter when they go away? I would lean towards, like you said, the wrought iron for that uh, for that reason. I mean, if you would like to ask us to approve the wrought iron fence for the photographs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could get my arms around that. And I think for the commission, um, this is a seasonal, so we would see it again mm -hmm. next year. So if if the application that they provide this year turns out to be inadequate, we'll see it again. So we do have it's not a permanent yeah. fixture. That's a good point, Anthony. Thank you. I'm actually not even sure that the city is going to allow uh, patios like this uh, next year. This is something that they're making exceptions for for COVID mm -hmm. specifically. So you know, there's a chance that we might not even be allowed to do this next year. Um, so they can do it on Gay Street. You can do it on South Dorm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I think the, the clarification for material wise, uh, wrought iron, not wrought iron like. So we don't, don't want to see vinyl and mm -hmm. aluminum fences out there. If you're going to be approved on, on wrought iron, we want to make sure we're doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, sir. I wouldn't want to see that out there either. 
Mr. Chairman, I have a motion on agenda item number nine, application GV21-04-025 to approve the application as amended by the applicant to require A, to not include the vestibule as part of the application, um, and B, to uh, approve a wrought iron fence in the style and height shown on the example photographs, um, and that it be removable. Jay, take out the exterior painting too. I'm sorry, Ned, I actually thought I did. Yes, that, that the exterior painting would be approved by staff. Second. I, I do have one more question for the applicant and, and we'll we'll do the vote, but I'll make sure I ask the question before we, we do this. Um, so when you remove. If when you remove that, uh, that vestibule, the awning over it. Um, I know that was added as well. That got, the awning did not exist prior to and typically when we approve awnings, uh, they'd be open on the end, like the 1 to the, to the right to the north of the building. So, if, if you're moving the vestibule, uh. I would assume the awning would go with it, and if not, that would need to come to us for approval because that doesn't have approval as currently. Okay, uh, we can remove, we can remove the awning. Um, is it something that we could leave up until we get it approved, or do you want it removed right now? Because I'm the next call that I make is to the awning company to come and take down the the vestibule part. Awesome, the commission. Okay, you can get an order on it, and then then you'll have to. Take the appropriate action. Yeah, it, 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 it just would make everything fly easier if you undo the stuff that you did that <laughs> normally needs to get approved. <laughs> which is yeah. Understood. Just want to make, make sure I put that out there. I don't want you getting hit with a code order or something down the road here. Yeah. To address it. That's all. You're, you're right, Ned. And, 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 you know, not, not everyone is going to love this um, patio dining at that location. And, the last thing you want to do is to give people things to pick at. You know? A reason to call you in. Yeah. Okay. I, I feel very fortunate that our neighbors have been extremely supportive of us so far. So I, I do appreciate that and I appreciate your feedback. We'll get that whole thing removed uh, within the next few weeks here. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it. All right. We have a motion on the table with a second. Are there any questions on the motion? Uh, Jacqueline, we, we did make a few changes here. Are you good with the, the motion as it stands? Um, yeah, I just, I don't know if you mentioned this already. Is the final style of the fencing or any details like that should be submitted to staff? Well, the, the final, staff? the final detail. Yes, the details should be submitted to staff. Correct. The style has been. What's been submitted as an example photograph. Okay. A, a clarification on that uh, commission Panzer. Uh, so for the applicant. You, you, you provided a sample photograph, uh, but then also said you want to match the neighbor's fence. The sample photograph has the rounded top, the schoolhouse fence. The neighbors had the, the picket, the pointed top. Which one are you uh, applying for here? Just to be clear. Be clear. Uh, I would probably prefer to match the neighbor's uh, fence. Um, ultimately, I feel like that's kind of up to y'all. What, whatever you would prefer, I'm good with. We we do both. Yeah, I, I I would prefer to match the neighbor's fence if that. Uh, so, is, is there a safety issue for the restaurant? The rounded tops are safer. Fewer impaled children. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I I would go with the rounded top. On top. Yeah. I I think we can leave it up to the applicant. I think you know, a very good point has been raised, but I think we can leave it up to the applicant and it becomes an issue of what gets submitted yeah. to staff. Okay. The applicant and his insurance company. There you go. <laughs> right. <laughs> How many impaled children is acceptable? I, I just, just want to make sure that Jacqueline had the information she needed to make that uh, mm -hmm. staff review. If you can impale a chicken on it, you don't want it there. Let's put it that way. Wait, if we're on the record, zero children impaled is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, there's nothing in the guidelines about it, but I'm opposed to impaling children. All right, good. We're all on the same page. <laughs> all right. So moving this forward, we have a, we've got a clarification. Uh, any questions? We shall go ahead and take the vote. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. 
Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much, Mr. Lieben. Thank you very much. Best of luck to your business, too. Good luck. Yes. Yep. Good Appreciate luck. It. Cheers. All right. Uh, moving on to item number 10, uh, GV-21-04-026 Alpha 576-580 Cedar Alley. Do we have a Nathan, Nathan Sampson or a Cedar Alley LLC representative? Yes, uh, Nathan Sampson's here. Um, right. Am I uh, popping up yet? I see your name. I see your face. I see your hand. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And please state your name for the record. Uh, Nathan Sampson with B. Hall Sampson Deeds. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. Okay, this application involves both exterior alterations to historic uh, structure as well as new construction. Uh, the exterior alterations would be involving the roof, siding, windows, doors, <coughs> foundation, entry stoops. Um, and I think that's all for exterior alterations. And they have the details there. The new construction would be for an attached garage addition. Uh, I think the applicant has submitted revised documents that I believe remove the parapet walls. And then there's some um, information about the doors, sidings, windows, trim, and garage door. Uh, so the applicant has modified to also repair the existing historic two over two windows rather than replace with new as was for the initial application. At the March 23rd uh, business meeting, the commission recommended that the applicant consider having the application reviewed conceptually and noted that the attached garages are not recommended. Uh, the commission asked if the design was driving the double wide garage doors or if uh, double doors are the only option. It's generally once a garage, it's also generally once the garage is attached, it is calculated to the lot coverage of the house. And the commission asked, would the lot coverage be much higher than the 54% being shown? I believe the applicant has revised the zoning vari uh, variation recommendations. Um, and the commission also noted that the alley can only be counted for once for lot coverage. A possible option suggested was that on lateral, a garage replacement had gone with a single wide double lawn garage as opposed to a double wide garage door. Um, at a minimum, if an attached garage were to be approved, a disruption would be needed between the house and a garage to differentiate the buildings. And at, as least at last time when there was a stone coping, the commission did recommend that the stone coping um, on the parapet of a frame garage that would not be compatible. So ultimately, uh, staff does recommend continuing this application. There's a couple of outstanding items um, that we have concerns over. Um, that is that the garage is attached to the residence, uh, which is, should be separated as per the GVC guidelines. Um, the others are that the full siding replacement looks a little bit too large in the reveal for the exposure. And I believe, I believe that's it. Oh, and those recommendations are based on the standards for alteration, and that is on 1, 2, 3, 10, and 12, as well as the German village guidelines uh, for new buildings, garages, and outbuildings. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, Mr. Stampson, do you have anything else to add? Um, yeah, I think Jacqueline covered it pretty well. I mean, we had a long list uh, of a description of work, and basically what we're trying to do to the original structure is... Um, basically uh, keep the existing certainly footprint detailing uh we're just trying to bring uh the building uh or repair the building and restore it uh as much as we can as far as the exterior is concerned um the uh there was a question also from the business meeting about what what's the siding underneath the the siding that you see the red siding there so we went out and there is actually the same uh, shiplap uh, siding underneath it. It's just in worse shape. So we would like to take that off and replace it with the shiplap siding that we've proposed. Um, the shiplap dimension that we're proposing with its overlap is the same size as the existing siding and the same profile um, that's on the house now on both layers of siding, uh, the buried one and the visible one. Um, so the uh, I think, you know, all of that work is pretty concise. Um, I did have one or two questions just to ask you guys about. One is in the staff report, it's noted as 54% uh, lot coverage um, as an allowable. And I didn't know. 
if that if it needs it, like if, the, if there's no extenuating circumstances that set it above 50 or if there if there is any um the uh second one is the stoop that we're proposing to uh keep on the I guess it's the west or the east side of that uh, Cedar Alley facade is does extend into the right of way, and that the building does not. But the the right of the, the right of way sort of splits that landing uh, in that front stoop. Is there a? Do we need to address that with uh, you guys as a variance for setback, or is that more of a city of Columbus clarification? I, I'll, po I'll pose that question and then I'll, I'll keep going. Um, so for the garage, you know, what we are trying to do is certainly set back the garage so we have a minimum of 20 feet from the, uh, the far side of Burger Alley. Um, and understanding from the uh, business meeting, uh, some of the comments that are uh, presented by uh, the commission, um, we understand that there's probably uh, a little bit to do here in uh, separating that garage if it is to be attached uh, with a hyphen and possibly um, a material change. And I wanted to get, I guess, the commission's uh, thoughts on how best to approach this garage uh, from a exterior finish standpoint and also footprint standpoint to uh, better uh, fit into the neighborhood. This is uh, something that we've done in the past on Mohawk, uh, certainly different dimensions, different style houses. Um, but I want to, I guess, work towards making those revisions um, that make the, the commission comfortable with the idea of that um, attached garage. Just the yard back there is not that small or not that big. Um, we're trying to get a, the two car garage to um, fit into that space while retaining the, uh, you know, I guess the most depth we can as far as the rear yard is concerned, tucked into the interior of the lot. Um, there was one other uh, clarification that I think Jacqueline mentioned the, um, the cap on the garage. It was, it was misnoted. It should be wood. Uh, and then the lot coverage calculation was incorrect. And uh, I think the lot coverage that we are looking at now um, is 61.5% uh, because I think the calculation before um, took a greater footprint out of that side, uh, the alley allowance that we have off of Berger. Um, we're going to uh, repair and retain the existing two over two windows on the existing house and all street facing facades and also on the rear dormer, except for where we're proposing a uh, door to be located in one of the window locations. Um, I think that's most of it. Yeah, and I'll open to questions or, or anybody's comments on the the questions I posed for the uh, right of way and the um, uh, handling the garage. All right, uh, we'll try to tackle your questions here and then move into the review. Uh, so your first question um, you mentioned was about, well, first question we'll address about the stairs. Mm -hmm. um, so right now there's a there's one existing stair that's partially in the public right away, uh, and if I'm reading the plans correctly, um, we're proposing to leave just the one and not the other two. Correct? Yes, that's right. So that's that is existing. Um, as far as requiring the code uh, variance, uh, I can't speak to that, but uh, we would not. So you can't have it if you're not if you're not replacing it. If you're leaving it as is, then okay. it is existing, and in our eyes, okay. we wouldn't touch it. That, that's perfect. I appreciate that. Yep. Um, the I forget what the very first question you had was. Um, uh, talking about uh, how best, or um, you know, I think and understand that this was a. Um, a revision that was submitted, but uh, dealing with the attached garage, 
differently. I think that based on the commissioner's comments from the business meeting, um, what we want to do is provide more of a hyphen between the garage and the main house. Gotcha. And then okay. also consider, um, you know, it's a shiplap house. And so when we think about, you know, differentiating the garage from the house, you know, we, we could look at the siding of that, um, certainly the color and with some sort of hyphen to help dif to help separate the two, um, just in trying to uh, meet the, you know, owner's goals and also uh, achieve something on that alley that looks uh, more appropriate, I think, with its separation. So I think what the commission needs to deal with first um, is probably the lot coverage. So you said you had 60 something percent and typically 50 is the, is the code and, okay. and getting anywhere high, that, that high is something that we have to talk yeah. about and address as well as an attached garage. So I think those are two big elephants in the room that, that we as a commission need to talk through and see where we stand. Okay. So questions, comments from the commission around those two items. I, I'm usually um, one who is sympathetic to the notion of atta an attached garage, especially if it's on the rear of, and, and I mean, a corner for a lot is a little unusual, but th this is, that's clearly the rear of the house. You know, I mean, if, yeah. the front of it is clearly on, on the adjoining alley. Um, so I, I would tend to be somewhat more sympathetic as, as long as there is a, uh, a, a clear differentiation, a clear break, both in, in terms of um, material and detail and and how it connects to the to the structure I'm, I'm looking oddly enough at two different elevations I guess one is older than one who's got like a wrought iron rail a cast iron rail between the house and the uh yeah. and the garage and the other one has a continuation of siding um right the the separation is better with the railing but I gotta tell you I'm nowhere on this lot coverage. I mean, I'm not even remotely anywhere kind of thinking about being close to, to it. Um, yeah. You know, generally, it, first of all, I think the, um, the, the getting credit and, and it is it is the law, so we abide by it. But I think that getting credit for half the alley it has been used um, and abused uh, to to get lot coverage, um, but it, but as I say, it's it's the law, it's the rule that we abide by. Um, but generally, when you get that fifty percent of the alley, that makes me even harder edged on fifty percent of of the allowable space. Um, when you don't have that kind of advantage, I've been known to to go. 52, 53, 61 and change. I'm not even remotely close to, to finding that to be something that is in the best interest of the of the neighborhood. Or more particularly in keeping with the, the guidelines and, and city code. Yeah. Now I, I understand that. And I think that um with comments from the business meeting and trying to you know understand how to best accommodate this um i do think that the garage probably has uh, a couple of things that need addressed and one of them certainly uh is the lot coverage question so i appreciate that feedback so Jay, are you okay with the two car garage taking up as much lot as it does if it's not no. connected and therefore it doesn't count? Right. No, it's still, it, no, it still counts because it's still over the allotment for the percentage of rear yard used, even if it weren't connected. The, so there's still a variance required. There's yeah, yeah. and, you're, and I, I mean it, it, it's there's just too much structure on the property. Yeah. <laughs> Let me I, to clarify that. Uh, question um the the garage itself uh falls within the size of a detached garage that's allowable and the percentage of rear yard that can be taken up by a detached garage right um, but when you when you but it's attached, when you, i get it when yeah. you detach when you when you use that 45 percent rule which is another yeah. thing i'm not crazy about you don't get to use the credit for half the alley when calculating that 
Right, correct. And and I, I was running the calculations and like, so if it wasn't attached, it, like it would, fall, as it sits now, it would fall within the allowable detached garage size and rear yard to back from the numbers that I'm getting. That so, anyway. sounds really weird when you look at the size of, well, I mean, it depends on what it looks like. Right? I mean, if you yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, so I, I, definitely, not, I definitely think we want to scale. So I tend not to be one who, you know, it's, a, it's an oddity of the rule that if it's, you know, in theory, if it's six inches away, you get, you have to calculate yeah. it one way. And if it's zero inches away, you have to calculate it differently. But regardless of the way you calculate it, it, it is a, a massive structure taking up a very significant amount. I mean, it's, it's a two-car garage, it's not a massive structure. But given the site, it's a massive amount of site space, massive percentage of site space being occupied by it. Yeah. Attached, yeah. whether it's attached or detached. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And I think that that's something that needs to um get revised I, I agree with you um were there any questions uh or concerns from the commission just on the outline or scope of work for uh the repairs to the existing structure yes yeah, so that was gonna be kind of tackle the big the big whales first then we're gonna go through yeah. the stuff that i think should be pretty pretty easy to get through so no, that's, that's the commission fair. Looking at the at the roof, um, we've got shingles from the approved shingle list. Uh, we've got um, existing OGs being replaced with half rounds. Um, so the question for the applicant: uh, the rafter tails on the property currently, mm -hmm. do we have vertical cut rafter tails or are they diagonally cut rafter tails? Uh, rafter tails on the building. I think they're vertical cut. So um, my memory. Yeah, the, the reason I ask is usually the the, the type of rafter tail determines if it ends up going with uh, the OG or the. I mean, they're drawn. Oh, actually, square actually, cut. no, they they're drawn. They're an drawn angle. square cut. Okay. Yeah, square cut. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the photos specifically on page 22 of the application. Mm -hmm. The top left photo. That looks like it's. Perpendicular to the ground. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just not sure if what's drawn matches what's there, or, or if what is there in the field is a mix, mix mash of, of different yeah. styles. I just don't really have a lot of good photos to, to make that call okay. from. Okay. But typically, if, if you got a vertical cut, it would be OGs. If it's diagonal cut, it's it's, it's half rounds. Yeah. Typically, because you can't get the, the, over, the overhang over the half rounds to make it work. Correct. Um, but I think that might require a little more investigation to find out what's there. What we don't want to have is bits and pieces, half half rounds, half OGs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so. Yep. I agree. I, I don't I think we share that goal. Yeah. Uh, as far as the wood fascia, um, boral, I don't think we have any issue with boral uh, across the board here. I got a question why we're replacing all the siding. There you go. Uh, the siding that's on there now, the red siding that we see, is actually siding that is deteriorating uh, in a number of spots, and it's actually laid over old siding. It's the same profile that is extremely deteriorated. So we wanted to take that off and replace it with a uh, matching profile uh, of siding that, that we see there. So it's, it's a maintenance thing somewhat, and it's also a corrective thing for uh, weather damage um, and also in, in proper installation. I mean, I agree with the west elevation that there's a lot of siding that's not in good shape, but the rest of it looked pretty good. Yeah. But to yeah. clarify, think, there's siding underneath all of it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. There's yeah. there's an that same profile siding that the red painted siding we see is overlaid on an older uh, siding that's also deteriorated. And, and, and once, you know, as a corrective measure, we want to take that off so we have a solid building envelope and replace it with, you know, like for like, as far as- So the, you want to go back yeah. to the original plane of the siding. And so what Correct. does that affect? Has the trim of the windows been built out as, as well, or how's that- uh, the, windows, the windows have been built out. Now we'll match the detailing 
and the trim cuts of that, which is in the application, just what those profiles look like, it will just simply move back. Those have been added back on where those trim profiles are. Yeah, the, case, the, the casings aren't original. Yeah. So, the, you know, the sills aren't right. The sills aren't detailed right. Yeah. So, Ned, I think, I think if the intent is to get it actually further back to original by pulling siding off and replacing everything and making it look more like it should have. Although, I guess the, the trick is, is what's underneath actually, does it actually need to replace? Is probably where you would go with that, right, Ned? I'd like to know. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, and uh, the, the rafters are, if there are rafters, are uh, plum cut. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there are, I mean, if anyone's interested as well, we removed uh, some of the red siding in a couple of places to investigate what was underneath. And you can see the, the uh, previous siding and its condition in a number of those places. Now, those are places where there was deterioration, you know, twofold. So the siding underneath has uh, extra issues at that point. Um, I imagine that the old siding was covered up as a, a bit of a shortcut for maintenance issues with the previous site, if it's the same profile. And... It's interesting that they did it with wood. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't, it, it had to have been a while ago, uh, but. <laughs> it's is it long similar. enough, long enough ago that the overlay siding is actually contributing? Almost. <laughs> yeah. So, so then, to, to, to your comments there, if we indeed take off the outer layer and we take off the inner layer and we put up a new layer at that inner plane, uh, I think your, your comment was that the, the, the window details, the trim around the window details is not what it should be. Yeah, it's yeah. close to what it should be, but it's not on. Yeah, we want to make sure we don't extend, The sills don't extend beyond the casings. There's no good yeah. window apron underneath, no good sill apron underneath, and all that stuff ought to be. If we're going to yeah. do it, do it right. Yeah. I, I think that, that the the casing around the windows was either reapplied or applied in like over top of the uh, previous siding, and that's why our sills are short and we have some other issues around the windows. Yeah. And it, it, it actually looks newer than the siding. Yeah. Yeah, and it may be just because of deterioration. Yeah. Um, so that is the roof. We talked about the siding there, the windows replacing with approved window lists. Uh, uh, Jack, have you had a chance to look at the windows that are out there? Uh, so that, that part of the application, I believe, has been amended. So okay. We can, can confirm that the, the original yeah. two over two windows, they are now uh, looking to repair instead of replace. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we went out and took a look at those when we look at the siding. And, you know, for the most part, they're not in horrible shape. They can be repaired. And so I think we would do that and, and then perhaps a uh, storm window if the owner wanted the extra, you know, thermal value. But at this point, it's just a, a, a repair of those existing old windows. The, uh, the basement window? The what? What's the, what's the plan on the basement windows? You plan on uh, so, those or? Yes. And so Jacqueline uh, sent us an approved basement window, which is the uh, Marvin Infinity uh, model that we would use uh, for those locations where it's boarded up uh, along at least Cedar Alley uh, with the two windows along there. Yeah. My view. Okay. And uh, we had one on there that was for, for basement window use only. So yeah. I'll make sure that got, that got to you. That, that's yeah. the one. Yep. I got this one. Yep. As the approved window list. Certainly use that and then uh, match the mullion profile on the house, which is, I think is a 5 8. And then the next item on there was the non historic transoms. Do you intend to still replace the transoms or you tend to look at what's there or? Yeah, the doors and transoms we were going to switch out uh, for new from uh, the approved door list or door style list. Those would be solid wood doors and fixed wood transoms. I think the, the overall goal that we have, and these are good questions too, is just to, you know, repair the building, uh, 
you know, fix the problems that are there, but keep the existing or historical aesthetic and detailing throughout on that structure and, and maybe um, uh, fix some of the things that were done to it over the years uh, to bring it back closer to what it may have been before um, they got fixed. It, it's, a, it's a nice building and it's unique in the fact that it's a, a three family originally. Yeah. Um, uh, along the line of the, the doors, just kind of run down a list still. Uh, second floor door, adding a second floor door to a roof deck space over the garage. Um, I think with the garage being in flux, I'm not sure we can really talk about that too much. Um, we're not a big fan of cutting openings into existing structures exposed if, if we don't have to. So I think we'll address that when, when you come back with more garage information for us. Uh, the foundation uh, pulling off the, is the stucco wash and, and re cut pointing. I don't think we have yeah. a problem with that as a commission. Yeah, it may be a mortar wash uh, when we went back to inspect it. But yeah, we want to take that off, tuck point the foundation. Uh, the entry stoops. So removing the, the two stoops, so the center and the right facing the building be removed. Um, Replacing that planting bed along there. I don't think we have any problems with planting beds. Uh, my only question would be if the structure is on the. Let me go back and look at the drawings here. You provided the site plan. Just making sure we're not putting plantings out in the right of way. Yeah, yeah. I think we want to. Where we pulled them back at one point to make sure that they were in the right of way. They're pretty thin at that yep. point, but uh, I think it's an opportunity to have some green there uh and then going down you have the northernmost stoop which is the one up at the corner um look at the photos that thing is pretty well demolished um yeah from the bottom right photo from the, the time photo. from the time that like we submitted the application and had the photos photos from our site measure a number of months ago that stoop, it got hit by construction trucks from across the street. It has been rebuilt just for safety reasons, but with brick, basically, or repaired. So is it repaired to the point of, where, of what you want to be at the end here, or is it where you're going to do more yeah, work? I, no, I think that it's it basically resembles now in this picture what you'd see at the right, the furthest right door. It's just, you know, fully completed repaired brick uh, stoop. I would just say when you, have, when you come back to the garage, if you just bring the pictures as part of that, just so we have the documentation of what it is. Yeah. So that, that's it for the, I'll say the repairs on the property. Mm -hmm. So any comments from the commission about all of that uh, we talked about? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And then as, as far as the, so we talked about a couple of those uh, variances, um, just for the applicant's knowledge. Uh, typically, we, we as a commission like identifying which variances are kind of existing conditions. So they're going to be there regardless of whatever you do with the property, yep. um, as opposed to ones that you're, you're causing by, by the new work. Um, so we'll, we'll go through those. Okay. Yes. At that point in time, when the, we come back with the garage information, and we'll sort through all that. Okay. We'll need light fixtures too. Yes. On the exterior next to. Now, uh, we'll leave it by the exterior doors that are used. And I, I imagine if the stoops are taken away, would the commission want those uh, fixed? doors treated the same way, even though there's no stoop or just at the entry, as far as the light fixture? I I would say if it's on an active door, I wouldn't have a light fixture. Right. Okay. I just want to make sure I understand you. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or information, Mr. Sampson? Um, I don't think so. I think I know where to focus our work here. Um, I appreciate the feedback uh, on the existing structure. Um, I mean, obviously, I think that uh, with your feedback, 
it gives us a little bit of room to uh, develop the work on the existing house and perhaps table this uh, for consideration of the garage revision. Um, so, Ned, I know you had some some questions about about taking out these exciting. Are you past the point of being concerned about taking out the exciting, or do you need more information? No, I, I'm okay. Okay. So make sure we weren't letting him kind of expect him him going down a path no. that he found with something and we come back later. Okay. No, I, I think I think it's it's a good approach to correct a lot of the problems and get some yes. architectural issues solved. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, it just as reference to, I think the only two variances that, or there's three variances that are related to the garage. Are we going to do that? It's a separate agenda item, but do you, do we have to cover it separately? Um, I don't think we can address the variances around the garage until we know what the garage is going to be. Sure. The rest of them are related to the existing structure besides okay. lot coverage and rear yard. Um, the only other thing that uh, uh, Christine lead at the city um, I was working to clarify with her is that we may need a technical variance if we're turning a three unit building into a single family structure because the lot is uh, non conforming as far as its size. And so that would just be related to the existing structure, I think. The 6,000 square foot minimum for R2F lot size, and we're at 3,400. Gotcha. Oh, no, okay. Yeah. And, and honestly, sure. you're going from three units into, into one, and R2F, I believe, is two units yeah. typically. Correct. So we're you're yeah. kind of trading a one for one. So I, I don't think you'd have any pushback from us on that. Okay. okay. Do, you, do you need us to vote on any, on any variances, or do you want to tack them all at one time? I'm assuming you're probably not going to submit these things separately. Yeah, I think I need to go through the BZA all at once with them because I don't want to go twice. Okay. Yeah, if they're existing, we tip it, we don't really have okay. heartache over it. Right. Okay. Okay. If that's the case and there's nothing else, uh, is there a motion to continue uh, to next time? I so move. Second. Any questions on the motion? If there are no objections, hearing no Commissioner, objections. Yes. Commissioner Hartke, I have to abstain. Okay. No other objections? Uh, do we want to have uh, the photos of the siding beneath submitted to staff as well as the stoop? It would be good to record it. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Thanks, Jacqueline. Okay. So back to no, no objections. Mm -hmm. Hearing none, motion passes, it is continued. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate Mr. it. Mr. Chair, if I may, I need to step off at this time. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And then just to make sure we've got our record clear, uh, the application GV21-04-026, bravo. If we can just go ahead and get a motion for that as well to continue, just so we can make sure we have that document. Okay, so move to continue. Second. I got a second. Any questions on the motions? There are no objections. Here are no objections. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nathan, I will do my. Oh, he's gone. Never mind. Oh, no, I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh. Yeah, so I will make my usual request that you tell John that I said hello. I, I'm I'm to pass on to you that he said hello back from the first time. So okay, we may good deal. This next time we see each other, <laughs> we don't see each other frequently enough. Well, I'll bother him about that. Okay, uh, moving okay. on to thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number eleven, GV dash two one dash zero four dash zero two seven five six five Lathrop Street. Uh, I see Ms. Eric Meyer on the call. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Um, so just, I guess, a little back. Mr. Meyer, before you continue, if you please raise your right hand. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot about this part. Sorry about that. Good. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Uh, yes, I do. And please take your name for the record. Eric Meyer. Thank you. And then we'll have Jacqueline go ahead and introduce the, the uh, item, and then we'll come back to you. 
Okay. Uh, fifth, five, six, five left throughout street uh, is supposed proposing to install a stone veneer to cover the existing skirting or foundation below the wood siding on all elevations. The stone veneer would reflect other foundations in German village. Uh, the applicant notes that the current skirting or foundation is covered with a non-structural tile that shows signs of old foundation issues that have been resolved, but have been poorly tuck pointed over time. So at the March 23rd uh, German village business meeting, the commission asked to confirm that the tile uh, is truly a veneer, noting that some homes do have similar tile block foundation historically, and also asked approximately when the tile or block was added. The commission also asked if the proposed foundation would be added on top of the existing tile uh, with the concern that this may extend the foundation several inches beyond the siding. So uh, staff did find photos showing the existing foundation dated to approximately 1975 in the file. Um, although the photos are undated, they do show the home when it had original wood siding. Uh, and an application was submitted in 1975 regarding installing aluminum siding uh, that was installed, but has since been removed in the 2000s, indicating that the photos were either part of that application submission or submitted prior. So they found, do we have any photos that show a different foundation material? Uh, no, sorry. The photos from 1975 ap appear, they're not the best quality, but they do appear to show the same foundation material as currently today. And that was okay. the oldest photos um, that okay. I could find. Okay. Thank you, Jacqueline. All right, Mr. Meyer, anything to add? I would just say that um, since that meeting, we did uh, reach out to our, our Mason um, with a question. Uh, he's told me that um, it, there's blo it's block foundation with a, a glazed block covering. Um, if you go in my basement of my house, you'll see just a straight block foundation. And on that photo that's on the screen now, if you look on the, this is the Lathrop um, elevation. If you look at that very bottom row of, of um, foundation blocks by the sidewalk, that it looks like the, tile covering has worn off or is not there anymore. So that kind of gradation you see on the, the ones above it is is not there. So I what what I guess I would say is, you know, okay, if you get on the street on Jackson, um, there's multiple homes that have, you know, uh, stone covering the foundation. Um, really, my intent here is uh, my wife and I bought this house a year ago, then the pandemic happened a week later. So we've had a lot of time to look at it. Um, and We've just noticed there's, you know, the tuck pointing has has some of the mortars coming out and things like that. So really, our intent is just to, and also on the bottom right, um, you can see there's a not well, but there's a chunk of the its foundation sticking out several inches, as well as on the bottom left, you can see a piece of it had been looks like repaired with concrete or something like that. My intent really is just to get guidelines or suggestions. Um, we we picked the the stone just because we saw it on Jackson, which is just a block away on multiple houses that had vinyl siding. But really, my intent is just to do something to kind of you know preserve it. We have concerns about the you know the mortar and things like that. So that's my intent. If there's a better way to go or a better suggestion, that's that's fine. But that's really what we're trying to get at. So I, I don't know if that helps at all. all right. Appreciate that input. Uh, we'll turn it over to the commission for any questions or comments. Yeah, I, I walked over to take a look at this. It, it is the stone foundation. It is a either it's an extruded or cast in place ceramic product. If you look at the foundation there in the front and the lower left hand corner, it is a piece of the material cut off that's been uh, mortared to fill in the loose end. But it goes, you can see it's a it's an eight inch deep material. Um, it is discolored. I don't know. Maybe cleaning would take the discoloration off, but I think it's original. It's it's not an application over something else. And I I can concur on on Ned's comments. I, I live further west on Jackson. I also walked by it and took a look, and uh, and it is what you're seeing there like on that bottom row on the front facade. Typically, what would have happened is they would have not spent the money on the texture of the material until they were above grade, because that's just kind of throwing money down the drain. So that's probably the very last smooth face block um, of the underground, and they moved that texture block as they get above for the the uh, the uh, architectural aesthetic. And one of the things that's happened over time throughout the village in many areas is that that grade has changed. 
Um, mm-hmm. it, it there used to be the village used to be a lot more hilly than it is now, and and with both hills and ravines in it. Um, and when they came through, the, the biggest issue was when they came through and put sewers in. Um, they just made huge cuts and, and changes in elevations of the street. So that, that can have something to do with it. It can also be just over time where people choose to put in curbs and choose to put in uh, um, put in sidewalks that, that result in, in that strange appearance of a change of material, which really was always intended. And just for the, and for the applicant, if you walk down Jackson uh, to the west, um, you'll see there's a, a reddish brownish structure on the corner of the alley right there. First alley in, they have a true stone foundation, uh, but the bulk of what you'll see is what we call rubble foundations, where it looks like stone, but it's just pieces of stone. They're not really really cut uh, to any shape, just stacked and mortared together, um, and so. Most properties of this type would not have uh, what would be considered a, a fancier uh, cut stone foundation. They would have been a, a rubble foundation. This so, this was this was fancy. Can I can I put this a different way? Yep. You've got one of the coolest foundations in the village. <laughs> you you really do. I no joking around. I I've got a rubble stone foundation, and I dearly wish I had this kind of a foundation. I appreciate that. I, I this is the only one I could afford in German Village. I'm literally on the last block, so I appreciate that I got some, some character. I, I guess really, you do. You know, I, I, I don't want to do anything that harms the character of this. You know, when I was an intern in grad school, I worked on the Ohio Historic Preservation Tax Credit Program. So I, I love this stuff. I guess what I'm just looking for is some guidance on. You know, we've got concerns on mortar, other things. Just you know, if there are what I'm allowed to do to just. I think you I think you've got you need to find a really good mason who can clean this uh, can clean the block without damaging it to get it back to as close to its original color as possible yeah. and to um to repoint all of the joints in it. Um and I think you'll wind up with as I say, I think you'll just wind up with a killer foundation. I mean, I, I think that this and, and well, it's it's fine structurally now. I did have a basement doctor guy come in and look at it. There's steel beam supporting it. So I, there's not a foundation issue. Now it's just, uh, you know, making sure yeah. It's, yeah. it lasts. So, I mean, I, it sounds like if it's if it's original, which I, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I own it for years. So if that's a determination, that's that's fine. I just want to make sure I'm a good steward and it doesn't crumble down. So talk, talk to a good restoration architect and there's a couple in the city and there's one on this board. I was going to say one of who's yeah, sitting and, here. And, and, and there are ways. The 1900s. <laughs> yeah, there are ways of correcting the discoloration. You can get it back to one color. Lord knows I've done it on projects that I've been in charge of for brick and uh, CMU. For the, for the cost of trying to apply something over the face of it, which it would it would bring you more and more issues to address up the building because you'd be pulling the facade out along the bottom for that cost you can get especially on, on that front exposed area you can get a good, a good mason like like Ned was saying to come in and put a, an application to clean that up uh, to get some of that color back you can either spot fix mortar joints or take them out completely up to a certain depth and put it back in uh, and a good mason can do that and it'll, it'll look like it's brand new now, would that have to come back in for a conceptual review, or is that just for, you know repairing what I have that's existing and that's okay? If you're going to clean and, and retuck point, it's, it's considered maintenance, and you can just go to staff, and staff can okay. can approve that. Okay, that's that's very helpful. Um, as you can tell, this is not what I do on a daily basis, so I uh, I'm struggling about using the right words, but that's that's helpful. And, then, and if you talk. <laughs> Talk with the city with, with Jacqueline and folks. She can point you in, in the right direction of some good some good masons. And if you talk to the German Village Society, uh, they've, got, they've got some contacts there as well. Yeah, Jody probably has some folks. Okay, well, I think I've I've taken enough of your folks' time. I think I have the the direction I need, and I, I appreciate you folks uh, listening to this conceptually. Thank you for good your luck. time. Yeah. Good luck. And it sounds like you folks will see what happens on it, no matter what I do. So I look forward <laughs> to the uh, some notes on my front, on my uh, on my porch. So <laughs> you have nice flower boxes, by the way. 
Thank you. My wife will appreciate that. She's she's had to find a hobby in the pandemic. So. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you very much. We will move ahead on to no action needed. It's conceptual so we'll move to item 12 GV-21-024-028-628 uh, South 6th Street. I believe we have Scott Oman, Oman. Omen. Omen. There we go. That was kind of close. All right, uh, Mr. Omen, looking for your, uh, your face. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name for the record. Scott Oman. Thank you. And I just want to point out that having these virtual meetings allows people to be outside on these. This is fantastic. <laughs> All right, Jacqueline, go ahead. Okay, this is another conceptual application. Um, the owner was wondering if it was uh, at all feasible to install a new patio, uh, which would be approximately nine by nine feet adjacent to the north of the front door, walkway, or step. Uh, the patio materials would be concrete slab topped with the same stone used on the existing steps, which is Indiana limestone for the horizontal surface or surface and Indiana limestone veneer for the side or front patio. Uh, the height of the patio would be the same elevation as a lawn run of the front walk and the front walk will soon be just above ground level construction uh, per the previously approved stone wall, which is that application listed there. Uh, at the March 23rd uh, GVC business meeting, the commissioners noted that the patios in the front yards are not traditionally approved, uh, with some past exceptions being if the front yard is set way back from the house, as on a corner lot, uh, in which the yard becomes more of a side yard location. I think the commission did have a question about the past application, and I have to say uh, I did approve the extension of this, not realizing that it's been extended a few times um, and that it had been you know, previously approved by the commission. Uh, so apologies for that, but that's, um, I did include the application materials from that application. Uh, I think it actually goes back to 2016. Is that all you had to or is there more? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, that's it. Yeah, Just sorry. I did kind of vaguely there. <laughs> all right, Mr. Oma, anything to add? Uh, yeah, so um, essentially, um, I'll just explain the purpose of what we're trying to do. Uh, we're just essentially trying to figure out the the most appropriate way to add a little seating area. Um, basically, so in the photo that's on the screen right now, oh, sorry, um, the photo that's on the screen right now, there's a window right there. Uh, just kind of looking to add like a tiny cafe table and a couple chairs out front um, just for better interaction with the neighborhood. Um, so, uh, we're not married to any of the materials that are there, um, especially with it being like on a concrete base or anything like that. I, I think a lot of, from what I have read since we submitted the application, it sounds like a lot of things, um, need to be more in the, uh, permeable brick sort of construction. So, um, the materials that we initially put out there, that's just that the only reason we included those was just to match the steps that we already have. So. And we're not, we're also not married to the size that's out there either. So the ninth I know. All right. All right. On to the commission questions, comments from the commission. I want to hear what Karen has to say about this. You probably won't like it because I'm not. On a, on a house like this, I'm not really opposed to having a place to put a couple of the table and chairs in the front yard. Um, I do think it's a little more difficult on this project because um, there isn't a, there isn't a fence or something that defines the front yard. In a lot of cases in the village, you'll see people have things out there, but you know it's behind a fence. This is a very prominent front yard. Yeah, it's out of corner. Hey, Karen, I, 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 I have no, I, I wish they were just doing a porch across the front of the house at that yeah. time. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear what you said. I wish you were just doing a porch across the front of the house at that top level. At the top level where the stairs are. Yep. Yeah, we considered that as well, but I didn't think that that would fly. So I, I'd rather see that than a patio out in front that kind of. 
hanging out there disjointed from the house yeah. architecturally, et cetera. I'd rather see something that integrated to the house. And in and, and, and response to what we see a lot around the village historically, um, but not so much a patio out in front. And, and I know what you're talking about because I've got a lot of neighbors that sit on the front porches. I've got neighbors up the street that sit with their, they've installed uh, bistro chairs out in a little space so they can sit and drink beer and talk to all of us walking by. It's great. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I get it. Uh, but I'd rather see just, I'd rather see a porch across the front. Okay. Is that something that we, that the commission would entertain, would be doing a, a, a porch at that level that's upstairs? Especially if we did like a wrought iron fence surrounding it? Boy, we're getting into something yeah. that we've never gotten into before. Right. right. Well, that's a difficult thing. This is a new build, and we have one on South Third that has a front porch on the front of it. That's a new build. I, I think that's the saving grace of this. Is it's not yeah. it's not a a historic structure. It's a newer build. So yeah, yeah. I think yeah, it's, it's a little it's historic. This was historic. Yeah. I wouldn't be going there. I could I could see extending the landing elevation across. So that's, that you have, that's what I was thinking is that yeah. that brick land, you know, you do something from mm -hmm. the from the brick landing elevation back to the house, and that you leave the plantings across the front of that. Yeah, you could even return a hedge at the edge of the that's, sidewalk so yeah. that it's not. Yeah, return, I don't know dominant. if those are boxwoods or not, but basically return those box, boxwoods back along the front of that platform. Yeah, and that's kind of what the idea was. Um, and in the description that we submitted, that's that brick landing that you see right there. That's mm -hmm. actually the height that we were proposing. Yeah, but you see what your 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 classic mistake here is: you were supposed to give us credit for coming up with the genius solution <laughs> that we just did. So at least the genius solution, solution that we submitted. <laughs> I love your idea. Thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> there you go. It's very, it's really easy. You just uh -huh. into it. Well, and to do it right, you have to single out the individuals who were responsible and run the risk of insulting the ones who think they contributed. But <laughs> I'm just going to cut that conversation short right now. <laughs> I think I've insulted all the way around, but never mind. Excellent. So, so just to clarify, what what's being proposed as a as an option here is to take that. That patio, that that brick portion. So you take the two limestone steps up, mm -hmm. and then take that brick and bring that elevation around to the side. Is that what's being proposed from the commission here as an option? Yeah, I mean that's what yes. he's that's what he's laid out, and I think it would be it would want to be in brick, and I think it would want to you know be permeable and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. I I do think that. It's important to return landscaping across the front of that. Sure. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, we would that try to hide that great scene. It's a little tough to tell whether the dimensions are on, on the, the old plan are really what's there, and they don't yeah. look to be. Um, it looks like the the landing, the, the brick area of the landing does not extend as close to the sidewalk on the photograph as it does on the drawing that we're looking at. So something looks a little different. And I think that the good news is the reality may be better than the the drawing that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. It may there may be more room between where that landing goes or where that platform goes and the sidewalk to leave a little more space for the plantings. Sure. Does so that require a retaining wall? Yeah, so yes. and that was actually yeah. going to be my next point mm -hmm. is um, the the work that we the the initial um, application that we had approved back in 2016, um, which got interrupted initially because we had a child and then delayed because we had a two year old. <laughs> so um, the the initial those include a um, there's a retaining wall that's basically going around the entire front of the property that is at the level of that brick um, landing after the first two steps. Yeah, if you look at the very last page of the application, I was presenting, go to the very last page. We approved that? Mm -hmm. Wow, what were we drinking? Uh, it was at the end of one of the rock mill meetings. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you zoom in on that uh, that little inset photo on the right side. That was what was proposed at the time. And if you zoom back out after folks get a chance to look yeah, at it, I, 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 mm -hmm. I think that you you've created a bit of, or I, I think going, I think these things are mutually exclusive. Does that make sense? I think that that to get that raised patio at the back, you need the sidewalk level planting bed that allows you to return the basically return the head um, across the front of it. I I don't think you can lift that whole thing up to the elevation of that brick patio. So in this drawing, we're looking at the lower left-hand corner, right? Yeah. Well, to, uh, above the walkway. Mm -hmm. So, so Jay, if I can play yeah. devil's advocate to you here, um, would would this being approved with that wall along the sidewalk? Would if that wall re remain along the sidewalk, putting plantings on top of that wall to provide a buffer? So you'd have the retaining wall and then landscaping and your patio mm -hmm. behind that. Is that more or less equally attractive uh, from a, a uh, historic appropriateness perspective uh, than having sidewalk planting at sidewalk elevation and the wall behind the planting? And then your, uh, your, your patio surface would be potentially at a height of a small shrub. And Jay walked away. Mm -hmm. So I'm questioning the commission here on that. Is is it is it more appropriate to have plantings on top of a retaining wall, or have plantings in front of a retaining wall with a, a patio surface behind? You can do both. Okay. Yeah. I think either. I agree with Matt. I think either one. I think the key is getting that patio surface tucked back close mm -hmm. to the house with landscape in front of it. Sure, and that that's definitely something we want to do because in the plan um, that we the plans that we already have drawn up that are approved, um, the idea being that there's going to be basically boxwood hedges around both the sidewalk side of that wall and then also um, even behind that. So like between mm -hmm. between right in front of where this proposed patio surface would be, we would definitely have that same that same boxwood kind of like encasing the entire area. Yeah, and really, really looking at this existing plan that was submitted and, and approved at the time, that whole area is up at that 97.5, 97.7 mm -hmm. elevation to start mm -hmm. with. It's just really yep. changing the planting to some hardscaping. Mm -hmm. I'm muting myself. I think, I mean, for me, the whole thing starts getting too high. Um, you know, you've now got plantings that are set back that are starting you know, a foot and a half in the air or a foot and a half on top of a retaining wall. And then you've got a, a it's just, it's feeling very, it's feeling very fourth and Dashler to me, folks. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a good way. There's, there's a lot, I, I mean, retaining walls are something that, that, and and I I don't recall this and yeah it could have been at the end of a rock bottom meeting who knows but retaining walls we have traditionally used in places where retention is required and this is not one of those places my two cents I I, I don't disagree Jay I I do say that we we have a plan that was approved in front of us from. Mm -hmm. Five years ago, that would say otherwise at this point. No, no, I I agree and I understand that. Mm -hmm. But my my point is, if you want to go with the plan that was approved, that's the plan that you got to go with. Yep. But that the idea of putting stuff on top to screen a patio that is then behind that at that el upper elevation that that's where I have a problem. So there actually would, would not be a change to the um, to the 
vegetation plan it would just still be the same vegetation that we and the same vegetation at the same height on the existing plan it would just be that the patios behind it that's the only change well the difference is the difference is that the vegetation that's on the current plan has higher vegetation back at the house and lower the presumption is that lower in front of it and now what you're doing is you're taking that higher vegetation that's back at the house and you're pulling it up to the retaining the edge of the retaining wall so that you can create the patio behind it um, i i think the patio would actually replace that higher vegetation well, then you don't accomplish you what to. Sarah's talking about. I, I, I don't, I, I understand. I, I now think I understand what you're asking for. And my personal view is I don't think you can get both. I don't think, I, I don't think these things work in, I don't think they work well in concert for each other, with each other. And frankly, I didn't think they did. I, I hate, I don't mean to keep pulling up for industrial, but I don't think they were oh, there either. That's on a totally different scale. And I'll ask, I'll ask one more question. Um, just since it's conceptual here, looking at the very last page of the application, um, which was the previously approved, I'm seeing what looks like a, a pin in the very bottom left corner. And, uh, and a, a broken line running north, south on the, or up down on the page, bottom left. Oops. Does that intend to be the property line or mm -hmm. is that something else altogether? Because if that is a property line, I, I think we have a problem with putting any kind of retaining walls mm -hmm. out past the property line. That's uh, just a concern I have looking at this. You might want to look into that. Yeah, I know that that came up at the commission meeting and that's actually one of the reasons that we could not do a fence because um, ideally we wanted to do a wrought iron fence around the entire property and that was one of the reasons that we were told we could not was because the fence couldn't go on the other side of the property line yeah and, I, and i'm surprised we'd be putting a retaining wall um on the other side of the property line either mm -hmm. but listen i i've got to excuse myself i apologize i've got a, someone literally waiting waiting outside of my house for me i've got to go okay See you later. Take care, everyone. Nice, Jay. Thanks. So that, that just concern I want to raise. Uh, I'm surprised that we we would have approved the, the wall out there. Um, I'm not sure we had the authority to do that mm -hmm. in general, but. Oh, Anthony, I think we got the authority to approve it. It's just you got to get a, the permits and everything to let mm -hmm. you do it. True. Mm -hmm. Which may throw a wrench into the plans. Yeah, exactly. So to, to, the, to the point of putting plantings there, I think it's a lot easier to to say an oops uh, to get plantings there mm -hmm. than if it's already dirt than there is to build something else on there. Just something to think about as you go forward. Sure. So if we moved the wall back, did plantings in the front of the wall, that might be more appealing. I think that gets to what yes. we're talking about of having that plantings in front and then mm -hmm. it kind of negates the issue of trying to build a retaining wall out in the right of way. I right. think you might end up ki killing two birds with one stone, honestly. Yeah. Gotcha. So am I am I understanding correctly then it does not sound like the there would be a, a way to a feasible way to put a patio out there then? Uh, I think what we what we said before was having having that patio at that, that current 97.7 brick elevation and putting that back there, but having the plantings out front of that of that retaining wall for that patio having them down at the sidewalk grade. I think that's where all our heads are at. That's what, that's correct. Okay. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and this is conceptual, so there's no action to take on mm -hmm. this, no approvals to make. Right. Is there anything else you need from us, um, Mr. Oman? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. All right, if there's nothing further, we'll go ahead and put that one to rest. Thank you very much for your time. All right. Uh, any other open items? Number one. I'm going to go back. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't She's believe not... the applicant is yeah. here, but they have submitted some updated information, so we may uh, be able to move to a vote. Okay. Okay. Quick, and then... let... Go ahead, Jacqueline. Oh, sorry. What were you going to say? I was going to say, Commissioner, go ahead and just take a look at this real quick before we call up the table. Um, 
I guess we gotta call it regardless because we're gonna take some kind of action on it. So item one GV-21-04-020 526 South Third Street. I walked over and took a look at this. This area is really small. It is really small. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. yeah. Didn't think there was an issue with it. I think the only consideration was what kind of folks were asking what kind of herbs, what kind of plantings. Um, mm -hmm. If it's what vegetables and herbs, I don't, I don't think it's that don't big. Don't care. Deal. Whatever. Whatever. Don't they care. Want. Yeah. yeah. Plant corn. Agreed. <laughs> I had corn in my front yard. It showed up right over nowhere. Yeah. yeah. Like birds. Any? No, I, I have no. I have no problem with this whatsoever. It is. Yeah. It is very I guess, small. I guess I'd vote no if their plan was to plant dandelions, but I'm not sure we have jurisdiction. All right. Uh, is there a motion? Plan. Is there a motion on this application? I still move to approve as submitted. Second. Second. All right. Any questions on the motion? We'll take the vote. Uh, Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Any other items? Or... I move to adjourn. Second. I got a second. Any questions on the motion? Non debatable. Yeah. There you go. Uh, without any objection. Hearing none. <laughs> passes. <laughs> okay. Appreciate everybody. Everybody have a good month. Take care, everybody. Yeah. Next nice. call at some point. Everybody, here. Vac everybody vaccinated yet? Yeah. Yeah. Got one. Yep. We got two. Yep. I got two. I got Carol's two. Got... <laughs> yep. Come Friday, I'll be there. <laughs> good deal. <laughs> See you. Bye. Bye.